Hey everybody, welcome back to Troubles in Otari. We took a little holiday break last week, but we are back, ready to play some more of Paizo's follow-up adventure to their newly released beginner box. Before we start playing, we should say hi to players. We should bring them up, talk to them, enjoy their <laughs> presence. Hello everybody. Hello players, how are you guys doing? Is everybody, hey. Did everybody have a good little break last week? Yeah. Did everybody have a nice Wookiee life day? <laughs> <laughs> it was nice to celebrate. Yeah. Still Excellent. celebrating. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Cookies everywhere. Yeah, hour. I know that uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, celebrations probably looked rather different this year, but I still had a good time and I hope everybody else did too. Um, you know what? We're here to play Pathfinder, I say. I see what you did. <laughs> but unless there are objections. No? Good. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? On fire! <laughs> <laughs> oh, the dark clouds roll across the sky, blue becoming a deep swollen gray as the wind churns the sea into a riot of clashing waves where there was calm just minutes before. Spears of lightning stab down from the heavens and brilliant flashes of terrible light illuminate the face of a frightened young angler. They look to their crewmates for reassurance, but the others have a grim, worried set to their faces that only deepen the anxiety. Even the captain looks to be teetering on the edge of panic in this raging tempest. The angler shudders as thunder nearly slams the breath from their lungs. It was not supposed to be like this. What would their grandmother say? She who had faced ancient terrors and wicked beasts. She who had come to Otari with a life of story and song. What would she think of her grandchild huddled on the deck of a little fishing boat like a frightened rabbit? The captain shouts something, but the wind makes it impossible to hear. The angler knows that they have to get up. They have to get below decks. Finding a speck of courage, they force their legs into motion, stumbling toward the ladder that will take them to safety. And that's when the whole ship heaves and a great wave crashes over the side. The angler's whole world becomes dark, swirling salt water. And before their brain can process the terrifying surge of motion and inexorable energy, they are suddenly somewhere else. It is dark, but a flash of lightning in the distance reveals the bottom of the boat above them. This is it, a sad, ignoble death at the end of a sad, ignoble life. 40 years later, four adventurers stand before the blue figure of a wretched haunt, seawater pooling beneath its floating form. The angler died their sad, ignoble death, but found no peace in the embrace of the sea. As the ghost reaches out toward you, what do you all do? <sighs> Scream! <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> So Waverly just screams. And when you scream, the, the 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 ghostly figure like actually pulls back a little bit. It's like, oh. Sorry. Oh. What? Can we can are you able to communicate? Yeah. What you need to speak up. I really can't hear you. We're all the way over here. You're floating oh. in a weird light over there. Just I, speak I, up I, a little. I, I, I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. Is I I hope is it better I yes oh, I guess I guess I messed that up. Uh, Fee, uh, is this is this the floaty thing you you all were scared of? This seems not very scary. It's just a, 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 a. he's like <laughs> <laughs> like kind of dumbfounded looking <laughs> at this this figure. Oh, well, I'm, I'm if I'm if I'm scaring you, I I I, I guess I I guess I should go. Oh, I, get, I just hold this, on. He just this is sits just, on the edge of his bed. This is just terrible. What are you doing here? Um, you should not be here. You need to go to the light. No, I shouldn't be here. Um, why haven't you moved on? Oh, I shouldn't be here. Well, why are you still here? Please, we'd like to help you so that you can move on to the next phase of your, um, life. Make a diplomacy check for me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Waverly. Uh, 14. <laughs> oh, 14. <laughs> this ghostly figure kind of looks up at you and says, help me, how How could, yeah, you can't help me. I, yeah, I don't, uh, 
I don't know. I, I think you should just go away. No, I do think that we can help you. I'm sorry if I came on a little strong. Um, I've, well, um, it's, hmm, it's very interesting to be speaking with you, but from my studies, I have learned that perhaps if we help you in, in, something that you're you're looking to do um because it's clear that something's keeping you from moving on and if we can help you solve that um perhaps you might rest more peacefully uh let's try one more um diplomacy check or if you would prefer i think this is sort of in your wheelhouse as a religion check as well i would allow that either one i'm just gonna say religion because sure. <laughs> okay sure Oh, that's, that's better. That's better. That's going to be a 25. Okay. This time the, the ghost kind of like, like, well, help me. You're, you're here to help me. That, that doesn't sound right. I don't know why anybody would want to help me. I couldn't. I just let everybody down. I mean, I, I told her I was, told her I would take care of it. And I couldn't even do that. Who are you I don't know. To take I don't know that you. I just. Uh, you guys should just go. There's no point to trying to help me. I was nothing. Well, who were you supposed to take care of? And he kind of like, almost like wavers a little bit. And he's. Uh, I told her I'd take care of. I was a nothing. You guys should just go. Uh, well, he keeps uh, repeating it over and over, and it doesn't like he doesn't even seem to acknowledge what you're saying at this point. It's almost like he's on a loop. Okay, uh, team, uh, quick sidebar here. Um, looks like what we didn't expect was a depressed ghost. So I don't know how to handle normal, alive people emotions. <laughs> so I would love your input about how to take care of sad uh, blue thing over there. Ingrid Floaty. has heard of stories of spirits malevolent in nature, smashing things, breaking, intending to cause harm, but Ingrid only now sees a spirit with a broken heart. Oh, yes. I would usually be one to wanting to well, help guide this un- dead being, um, this floaty, sorry, um, into the next phase of, of their life, but it, it appears that we've been given some form of a clue. Um, he's let somebody down and perhaps have lost something or someone. Um, perhaps we can press him further to get more clues, but I fear we can't just leave him here to dwell in his sadness and his darkness for forever. Hmm. Perhaps we could look for other clues? We should ask a name. <gasps> oh, wonderful idea. Perhaps... So, oh, sorry. Oh, so I sh shouldn't ask him for rent as well. Because, I mean, he could stay if he could... I don't know if ghosts can make money, but that was... Okay, yeah, ask for a name. Go ahead, I mean, right? Uh, go, go do that. That could be a wonderful idea, though uh, quite an abomination to allow it, him to stay here because he has a journey to go do. Um, but perhaps if we looked around the room or got a closer look at his clothing, perhaps we could get some form of clues uh, as to something that he might like and we could trigger some form of information from him. It knows fish. This oh, person fish. must love fish. Oh, that's a marvelous idea. Gristle, do you happen to have any more fish in your in your pouch? Uh, well, of course, I always do. So I should throw it at him or <sighs> what? Won't it just go like through? No, I don't really, I guess I don't know how um, it goes. Perhaps yeah. just um, pull it out if, if we need it. Um, Excuse me, I'm gonna go back to him, uh, Jim. And I would like to uh, perceive sort of uh, if he's wearing anything specific, uh, has anything on him, a necklace, anything. Sure. <laughs> a locket uh, with the betrothed inscribed on the inside. <laughs> I lost that, this person. <laughs> before I resolve that, I wanted to check. Uh, Gabe, did you have something that you wanted to add? Because it uh, looked like you wanted to. Thea is literally just going to look at the other two 
we're making a lot of assumptions, but we literally found someone that can speak and want something. So I feel like they we could just ask them and they would tell us literally everything that we want to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I know she went, but um, what if they don't want to leave? We have to consider that. There's Sometimes not much to consider. You left the room. <laughs> Uh, sometimes people may want to make a choice, but we cannot put our own decisions on that. If no, they choose I, to stay. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. Because no, I, I imagine, imagine like a, a kid who doesn't want to leave the house, you know, his parents would just put him to work, right? So if this ghost, if we can't, listen, if we fail this mission and this one ghost stays and he seems pretty, uh, I guess, chill, I, I don't know, but... Uh, Maybe give him a job. Maybe he scares, maybe he's security and he scares away uh, people at night and we become the cool heroes that have like a pet ghost. I mean, that could be awesome for us. Yeah, yes. Um, But he would have to, you know, pay rent or contribute in some way. I mean, I'm not letting any freeloaders stay at our new headquarters. Great. All right, well, let's let Beverly do her thing and maybe something will come of it. Who knows? Uh. So, Waverly, I would love to get a perception check from you, since you're looking around the room trying to find, see if there's anything else you can determine. And then from either, I would say Thee, Ingot, or Gristle, I would love to get a uh, diplomacy check. I feel like you guys are all talking about this, and and this being can kind of, is just sitting there listening to all this. I would love to know how they're going to receive it. I'm going to need four. Did you say diplomacy? Yeah. Perception's at 24. 24, all right. Um, you are looking at somebody in, in basically um, waiters and overalls, and um, uh, you're looking, their their cloud, their their clothing, though it doesn't have any form, looks very, it, it has the, the appearance of being wet, and you can see they're actually like dripping water constantly onto the floor below them. And you can see little bits of seaweed that almost seem to be growing interwoven with the clothing. Um, this figure doesn't appear to be wearing any particular marks or like uh, your jewelry or tattoos or anything that sort of strikes you, um, except that they are just possessed of this just incredible sadness uh, while they sit there and, and sort of watch you go through the room and look at things and, and are listening to the others speaking. Speaking of the others speaking, I would love to hear what that uh, diplomacy check looked like. Inga got a 14. A 14. Um, when you guys start talking about, you know, being useful and and what what this ghost could do for you if you allowed it to stay, um, you can hear they, they, they sort of perk up and like, oh, oh, there's nothing I can do. I I'm just oh, I'm just useless. There's no point. There's uh, Oh no, this is just like before you guys are... Uh-oh. Oh no, oh no. Uh-oh. They get even, even like more depressed and morose as they're sitting there. Uh, okay. Uh, it uh. seems like really bad. Mm. Um, again, depressed ghost. Maybe we should just let Beverly keep talking to him and maybe she'll get him out of his funk or uh, uh, I don't know what to do I, I, I take a fish out of my pack <laughs> a jar of pickled fish if you will <laughs> and I kind of take one out hey um, blue fr- fr- friend in my house would you like a snack you seem sad and when I'm sad usually it's because I'm a little hungry uh, with it, can you I kind of hold it out to the okay. ghost you to make one more. <laughs> but it's a fish. Everyone loves it. <laughs> May I look oh, around? So, yeah. so they're sitting on the bed. May I look around the room to see if there's like anything, like a picture oh, yeah, yeah. frame or anything, or just like anything of semblance or uh, I'll might make be a of secret, a, a fun secret check for you. Can uh, you give me your perception bonus? Yes, I can. Uh, that is six. Six. Okay. 
So you're looking around as uh, Gristle is offering this fish up. And you spot it because um, it's a it's a it's an amateur job. There's some of the floorboards in one of the corners are very clearly been made to be like so that you could remove them. Um, it's you know amateur stuff. You know somebody was trying to, to. It's clearly something that you would do to hide something, but like you you could pick it out easily. This is you know. And I'm, gonna, I'm gonna wait for Gristle. Didn't fish, know what he was doing. <laughs> fish experience first before I say. Uh, and yes, that, <laughs> Gristle. What does this what does this fish look like? Uh, Gristle's fish experience is a uh, is a twelve. <laughs> twelve. So as you hand out the the fish, uh, uh, the ghost looks up and sees it, and you see their shoulders slump even further, and they say, "Oh, I knew it. You're just here making fun of me because I was nothing like I said I was gonna be. I just, I know I was just a fisherman, and you just, I, you just here to laugh at me, and I, I hate this. I can't." Oh. And then he disappears. No. Oh. Uh... I'm really just gonna stand up really quickly and look around. Wait, wait, come back, please. We're sorry, we didn't mean to upset you, please. I eat the fish and then <laughs> <laughs> okay. it's delicious. Ingot has some experience with a cult. And so with this spirit vanishing, maybe that could tell him something about the origin of the spirit or maybe sure, how- I, mean, I would certainly him. allow a roll, go for it. Let's see. 18? 19. Um, you can tell that like this this terrible sadness and there is a general theme to what the ghost keeps repeating and it's is like so fixated on. And yeah, you can tell that there's some sense like whatever is causing them to continue to haunt this place it stems from this sense of just overwhelming um, dissatisfaction with their life. Like, it, like they, they, like they may have had some specific task or goal that they couldn't reach that was so important to them that they, they can't move on from it because they died before they were able to. Ingot has a theory. With this particular spirit, Ingot thinks we must push it in one direction or another. If we wish to anger the spirit, and uh, continue to insult and make fun of said spirit, it may turn into something that is defeatable. Alternatively, if we help the spirit, it may move on. With this current spirit, it seems to be caught in the middle of two extremes. We could push it and make fun of it and continue to uh, aggravate the spirit into something defeatable or help the spirit and pass on but now, as it is, it seems as though it has nothing left but to haunt this fishery. I, for one, was not making fun of the floaty. Uh, I thought we were giving really diplomatic uh, solutions to the problem. One, give him a job. Two, give him a fish. Mm. Three, I don't know what the third one was, was, but okay, maybe we don't fight the floaty? And we try to figure out the mystery of why he abandoned his fishing post? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. That is quite wise, Crystal. In the industry of fishing, are there posts to abandon? Um, boat posts. Mm -hmm. And then, like, if you have a job, you shouldn't, like, leave it in the middle of it. But that's sort of... I don't... What do you think he stopped doing fishing-wise? Stop fishing, stop showing up to his job. At that note, I'm going to walk over to the floorboards and then lift them up. Maybe yeah. it has something to do with these. Ooh, a secret. You look down and you see a burlap wrapped bundle. Uh, Pick it up. Not too difficult to, to identify as uh, a, a weapon. Sword. Ah, interesting. Does it, does it look like a sword that should have been in the hands of a fisherman. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. This thing, as you unwrap it and you're looking at the blade, this looks like a beautifully crafted weapon. You actually note the appearance of uh, several runes carved near the hilt that would lead you to possibly believe this is actually a magical blade. Uh, 
no fisher you've ever heard of has had a blade this fine unless I mean, like that if, that if that's what all this guy did this like it's, it's shocking to see something like that here it's I feel like there would not be a magical blade in a place of a general fisherman this concerns me slightly hey ingot look at this blade be my guest and I'll hand it over sure I'd like to do an arcana check Absolutely. So you're looking at it, you notice that it has these etchings of lightning that trace all up and down the blade. Uh, the, the steel of it uh, is actually sort of a dark, almost gunmetal gray. And um, apart from its magical qualities, you realize it is also made of cold iron, uh, oh. which is made very difficult to work with, very difficult to forge. Um, even without the magical properties, this would be a spectacular weapon. For somebody in the station the wheel. What was that arcana check though? <clears throat> 25. 25, yeah, <laughs> looking at those runes. And it's identified. metal, like this is in Ingot's wheelhouse. <laughs> this is exactly what Ingot, Ingot knows all about. Um, you know that this is a, a it's a spark blade, uh -huh. which has, um, uh, it's it basically, it is a plus one cold iron short sword, normally. However, um, using one action, you can target any creature within 30 feet and have it uh, shoot a blast of lightning that mm. deals, uh, at a single target, 2d4 plus 4 electricity damage. Uh, and, much like your electric arc spell, that can leap to a, a secondary target. So, Damn. very valuable weapon. Uh, Ingot passes it back to the and is just holding it with reverence. This is very, very dangerous. In the wrong hands, perhaps it led to tragedy. And hands it back to Thee. Does so anyone this... have a preference or? Oh, I mean, you, I feel like I took the last uh, elemental blade and just was so-so, but maybe uh, one of you would have better luck with it if you know how to wield such a thing. I'm actually going to then give Ingot back the plus one short sword we got before, mm -hmm. so you still have one. Great. Um, as you guys are, are handling the weapons and divvying them up, there is a <laughs> flicker in the air. God damn it. And, <laughs> and this ghostly figure appears once again. Says, what are you? What are you doing? What are you doing with that? You 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 can't you can't just. <laughs> I, I had that, that is very important and it's it's not for you. I, it, okay, okay, hey, easy, easy. Uh, we, you left, uh, we didn't know what to do. So we started looking around. Uh, he is very good at finding hidden things and is very curious. So that's, I feel like this is on him really. Um, and uh, what, what is your name, uh, gentle, uh, floaty person? <laughs> I just, it's, it, I'm Finley. Finley. Fine name. Yeah. Finley, we would like to help you, but we, we don't mean to anger you. Uh, I've yeah, been told I'm not very... Is a fish pun? <laughs> Is it in the official book? Is it? <laughs> Jim Jim! <laughs> uh, wait, yes. Uh, sorry, sorry. Finley is in the official book, yes. This oh, is definitely a okay. fish pun. One of y'all is wild. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know what's happening anymore. Oh, anyway, <laughs> diplomacy. I was doing that, I guess. Uh, right. <laughs> you were explaining that it wasn't your fault. And that yes. If, anybody, right, right. if there are any negative consequences, they should default fee. <laughs> Correct. Good scapegoat. Uh, you know, Finley is standing there. He's like, what? I mean, I guess I, I mean, I can't even, I can't even touch the sword now because I'm, Is this your, your sword? Yeah, I was, I mean, it's my grandmother's sword. I was, I told her I was going to take good care of it. And then I told her that I, I, I never even did anything with it. What I do is out and, and fishing is not, she, that wasn't what I was supposed to do with it. She was a hero and I was just fishing and I didn't even use it. Like I told her I would. Uh, Ingot's going to pull Waverly aside. <laughs> like pulling on her robes down his level. Yes. Perhaps we could help for this sword to fulfill its destiny. 
if not the grandson. Oh, that's exactly what I was just thinking about. Perhaps we could convince Gristle to do something heroic, and perhaps we could do it in the name of Finley. So oh. at least he would have one legend out there that he defeated an enemy with a sword um, passed down from his grandmother, and then maybe he'd be able to rest appropriately. Imagine, I guess. Imagine that, that Thee is currently shaving yes, he is with, shaving the blade, with, the, with, <laughs> with the blade that shoots lightning. Yeah. <laughs> He's just watching this the whole time. Like, that's, this, uh, you can't do that. I, I slap Thee. Stop it. Don't push it. We said we're not going to make him mad. Ingrid, do you want to tell him the great idea? Oh, uh, perhaps Waverly should. Oh, um, well, uh, uh. Oh. Yes. Or not. Oh. Uh, Finley, fair spirit. Perhaps we may be able to aid in your quest by fulfilling the sword's destiny of a great battle. Do that. You guys fight lots of great battles. Uh, oh. Only great ones. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you would you would take the sword and you would use it to defeat evil. And we will even tell them it was in the name of Finley, so that you might have a legend or song written for you. Yes, we could create a special move for it called, like, the Finley Special, and it'll be, um, I don't know, really, really neat. How very generous, Gristle. Well, you don't, you don't, you don't have to do that. I, I don't, I don't, it wasn't about me. I mean, but if you did sword, and my grandmother, she was a, she was a great warrior. And if you took the sword and you carried on her name, then that would that would be wonderful. What was yes. this warrior's name? I that wasn't in the book. <laughs> Make it up, Jim Jim. Jim Jam. Scales key. I hate everything. I quit this game. <laughs> <laughs> They called her Scales as a nickname because she wore scale armor and she was a great warrior. As a resident of this of Otari, there are many fish names in this town. Don't knock them. They're pretty great and powerful. <laughs> Granny Scales. Nope, I'm just going to yeah. call it a scale. What should we name this fighting move? Uh, sca mm. Scalene Triangle. A the, 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 old, the old scaler. Yes. You, know, you scale a fish and kind of go like this, but like it's someone's like face. Mm. I like <laughs> Thank you. Naming Thank you. That sounds great. I'm Michelle. The player is concerned that none of you people know anything about fish in real life, and it's really starting to bother me. <laughs> oh no, I know a lot about fish. It's just why you're this way. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Mr. Finley, we will honor the memory of your grandmother, Scales McGee, um, by using her sword in an mm. epic, grandiose battle. That is very good. And I like that a lot. And I, you can, you, you can have the blade, it's yours now. And I feel like all four of us just sit there and sort of watch him, just waiting for him to like dissolve. Yeah. <laughs> Go to the light. Do it. Oh. Okay. I guess I will just fade into oblivion now. Are you happy at least? I don't know how long this is gonna take. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh. I only did, died once, so did did no one else consider that he probably has to see it? Oh. Oh. Well, uh, but if we promise with our true heroic hearts, I feel like that would be good enough. But I don't. I guess I don't know the rules. That's have you first... met us? <laughs> I've met me, uh, and I know that I when I make a promise, I keep it. Why did you pause so long? <laughs> I had to think if I hadn't yet, but 
you know, some. Well, no, I'm, no, I, I, I believed you guys. I, I, I'm like purpose fulfilled, but now I am starting to doubt a little bit. Is there something okay. wrong? Oh, no, nope. <laughs> nope. there... uh -uh. it's just, you know, we, we just got I... to this house. We have things we got to move in. I mean, I don't know how soon adventure will come to us. Surely soon, as we very are adventurers. Soon. Very, very, uh, yes, yes. Maybe I should stick around and not. Okay. Mm -hmm. no, the light no, is no. right there, though. I mean, no, I see no, it please, now. I'm oh, please curious go to the light. I... I would hate to have to smite I, you after uh, all of this just... work. I politely ask the rest of the party to leave the room for a moment. <laughs> well, fine. Finley, I will give you a promise. One that okay. I do not give slightly. Uh, and I wait for the rest of the party to leave the room. And I shut the door. And I walk up to Finley. Finley, I have given people many names and many voices before. I gave you the promise of Tuvo Navari. That is my true name. Your sword will be honored. Okay. Okay. I can go then. Thank you. You're welcome. And he fades away for the final time, passing on into the afterlife. This house is clean. <laughs> yes, uh, Crystal. <laughs> can I roll to see if um, I imagine if he told us to leave the room, we'd all leave the room and then pile up against the door. Don't no. make me roll a stealth. No, Don't no, make no, me roll I a get stealth it. check. No, I'm gonna give I'll destroy you. his moment. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> We'll it keep it holding Gristle back. It's <laughs> Waverly and Ingot. That would make like, sense. That's in character. Oh, no. Waverly and, and Ingot are probably talking Gristle's ear off on the mm. other side of that door about <laughs> the undead and ghosts and fish and all that stuff. I'm going to open the door. Okay, I think we are good now. Did he Did disappear? Was it cool? Yeah. Uh, it was It was like um, a lantern going out. That is. <gasps> kind of wish I saw it. How oh, exciting. He's off on the next adventure. Oh, do we clean? And think it takes a look around at the base. <laughs> well, yeah, we... I mean, this this place is now, to the best of your knowledge, uh, free from danger. You've 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 cleared it out. There are there's a lot of work to be done on it. You know, I mean, like the front porch is all smashed through. Right, and hold on, front webs porch. <laughs> Giant dead spider bodies all over the place, but for, for all That's intents decor. and purposes, this is your new home. That's, oh yeah, you're just gonna like <laughs> post them up on the walls. Yeah, they're trophies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know it's gonna be a lot of hard work, but I would actually be very curious to know like how, like, how do you make this place your own now that it is? Like what, what, what little touches do you add? Mm. Uh, there's enough for everybody. Like there, there are four bedrooms. Then there's like the office area. Then like there's this, that, that main sitting area where you fought the the, the web lurker, uh, where you could easily meet clients or just use as a lounging area. Like there's all different. All like it's a huge sprawling place. So um, there's plenty of room uh, to do just about anything that you would want. There is. Um, uh, in one of the rooms that you hadn't actually explored yet, but uh, where the web lurker had originally burst out from, you find it's basically like this big dining room. And you actually find a, a, a set of tarnished, but probably quite valuable uh, silverware. Um, this flatware set, you would guess, would probably be like 20 gold worth of flatware that you could sell to help with the cost of repairing this place if you wanted to. Um, or you could just keep it and polish it up and have some really nice uh, uh, stuff to eat off of. I think it likes uh, to feel fancy. Well, hey, feeling fancy is a good thing. <laughs> Don't you eat just a brown brick? <laughs> sure. And but on a silver plate. Bar. <laughs> <laughs> With nice <Yeah>. flatware. <laughs> Um, I think I would, I would, as soon as we were like settled, I would just start running through the house to look for the best room to claim it as my room. <laughs> Waverly's just following Gristle. <laughs> like, just following Gristle. I'm like running, I'm like slamming open doors, checking the sides, going to the next one, slamming open the door. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you, you definitely find one of the larger, the larger bedrooms. Uh, there's, they're, they're mostly the same, but there's one that you insist is better. <laughs> so nobody else can really see how it's better, but you keep insisting that it's better. So everybody just kind of be like, okay, fine. Yes, this is obviously the best room for Gristle. Um, 
Yeah, it's I, the, the window is the window is facing south, and I know about these uh, things. So. Right. Oh. <laughs> this this is a marvelous room for us to share. I think oh. you have chosen well. Uh, uh, mm, mm, no, Beverly, Beverly, we have talked about boundaries. <laughs> this is my room. There's plenty of room for all of us. Don't you need room for all your books and scrolls and oh, writing yes. stuff? Oh, yes, but I thought that you um, would like me at your side 24-7 so that I might properly document um, the, the day and, and nightly adventures of a adventurer, a hero. Oh, um, I and, mean... And for my thesis. Okay, but well, I, listen, I'm not going to have you sleep at the foot of my bed. That's not, that's not happening. Uh, why don't you take the room in, next door? And yes. every morning when I wake, I shall... Be very loud so you can tell that I'm awake and you can, uh, we can hang out in the, in the common areas later. Oh, great, yes. Just don't do anything too heroic without me. I don't think any heroic things are going to happen while I am sleeping. <laughs> Joke there somewhere. All right. <laughs> um, uh, I go to the exact room Crystal points at and start okay. <laughs> putting my books uh, on shelves, dusting, cleaning. I'm curious if anybody specifically wanted to take Finley's old room. Ooh. No. Or is <laughs> that one going to be left in, yeah, in remember? I'll, I'll take it. It'll be a good okay. place for the sword yeah. to actually stay anyways that's then. That's true. Yeah, that's, uh, that's cool. All right. And see your compartment built in. Mm. But I might stuff. need to recharge. In the compartment? Yeah. I don't think that's how it's, that's... it's lightning. Is that how magic works? No. <laughs> Could be. Crystal doesn't know. <laughs> Um, but Ingot will take up one of the, the bedrooms, um, and uh, it's it's pretty sparse in the interior anyway, but he takes up one of the shelves uh, that's attached to the wall and starts setting out his crystals sort of in the order that you've seen him do at camp, uh, and then sits down to start, you know, going through his spell book and, and cleansing the space for himself. Sure, sure. I, I think there's probably a few hours where after we've all unpacked, I'm I'm in the common room with everybody and I'm just like, okay, once again, what are we having above the front of the door? It's really important. Mm -hmm. And we didn't we never really landed on anything last time. Mm -hmm. Well, which services would we offer? Heroic deeds only. No? The front On only. Plus, um, other, if you need other things also, that sign's too long, that sign's too long. <laughs> Maybe deeds with something. Heroes for hire. Catchy, simple. Maybe a number four in the middle. Oh, Two. like hero, number. oh, that's good, that's a pun, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. I do feel like that's been done, done before. What about all the, what about like when we do things like get rid of a ghost? Is that considered a quest? Mm, busting? Busting. Hero mm. busting? Hero. For hire? That, that would mean we bust heroes. Oh, that's okay. Which I'm fine with if that's the route we're going. I just want to make sure. <laughs> it... You hire heroes to do the busting one sign. You hire, so, we fire. Long. And Waverly's here for um, writing everything down and healing when necessary. <laughs> Heroes for hire and and healing. I want y'all to know as you're talking about this and we're in this haunted house, my light flicked off and then on. And it was the weirdest <laughs> thing. Finley? Yeah, stop. Mm. I don't, don't get me started on this. I will talk to the soul. <laughs> You know, I mean, is this, this a chance? Is going, I'm just going to test all the locks in the house. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thea, uh, are you still listening? I'm just, I'm just yelling louder. Yes. Why oh, great. Heroes I... for hire and other things and fire and other things. And oh, healing. we didn't say fire yet. Oh, heroes yeah. and healing. And healing. Healing our heroes. Would this not be a good time to make a name for our party and maybe put that above the door? The chess. Ah. Uh... Scales. It, the four scales, scales or hero. Scales of justice. Ah. Uh, oh. Does that exist in this world? I don't know. Like that. <laughs> Does that analogy mean anything? Uh. 
Sure, yes, I like we we could be the scales of justice, but then I feel like hmm. are we tipping the scales? The leans in, the leans in. You realize we're literally dragon slayers, right? Oh, <gasps> we did do that. So we should be the dra- dragon slayers plus plus. <laughs> If we just say dragon slayers on the uh-huh. door, yes. they'll come. Uh. <laughs> then I feel like we might get pigeonholed into yeah. one kind of quest, and then we can't do any other kinds of quests. <laughs> I if, don't if need a dragon. I, I feel like if we can do this quest, we can do all the other ones. That's the assumption. <laughs> but is it unfair that we aren't saying that it was a little dragon? It was, in fact, a baby it dragon. It was so, a baby dragon. Oh, the name above the door could say baby dragon slayers, so but, that we're uh, not lying. Not saying baby is not lying, and most people in a fishing town can't kill a baby dragon. Who are you people? <laughs> you gone? <laughs> Called <don't> marketing. Think... <laughs> Please, Blood Cove, take me home. Okay, well let's hey let's why don't we just let's sit on this for a little bit? But we do need to put something about that door, or else people won't know who resides in this heroic lodge that we have procured. Pacifiers? That sounds like something else, but okay. Also, uh, we no matter what our name is, we have the right to say no to things. We don't have to accept everything that comes to our door. Mm-hmm. Unless it's heroic, yes. Uh, no. The pacifiers are open for business. Do we need it a swings name? open the doors. <laughs> I, I put it on a piece of paper, just temporary, and then I pin that to the piece of wood, and I put that above the door, just yeah. like for now. I do like the direction Ingot was going with scales. Uh, Can we marry the words scale and pacifiers in some way that makes sense? The pacifying scales. It sounds like a singing group. Like Which would make of... sense because we have slayed a baby dragon and babies use pacifiers. It is a full mm-hmm. circle. Mm-hmm. Okay. I guess I don't understand analogies very well. It's good to know oneself. Okay. <laughs> the scale, what did we just say? I forgot immediately. Pas- oh, pa- um, pacifying uh, scale. The pacifying scale, I put another piece of paper and tap it on, tag it on top of that one. Mm-hmm. Until further notice that we might change it again. And healing, don't forget. I add one more, like a post-it size note and healing. Thank I put you. it below. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Crystal. <laughs> Should I mention the healing is specifically for thesis research? Um, they could ask, you could say that in person when people ask. I, yes. I don't think they know that pacifying is our term for killing, so they'll probably think we're just peacekeep. You know what? Yes. Which is cool. Is we, keep is we keep space. We keep peace. <laughs> also, uh, we have to tell the town our name now as well. Well, like we, like we can do that whenever we feel. Well, that's easy. I'm way better. I used to be like thinking about what that means. <laughs> yeah, <It's> really hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well. Oh, you don't want this to go on any longer, Jim? I, I, uh, I have so much content. I love it. I love it. Uh, I feel like. This real brainstorming you know, session. Lightning will strike at some point in your adventures, and you'll know <laughs> what to do. But, we got uh, the sword. You do <laughs> have the sword now. Um, I did uh, I, from the chat. I did see uh, the baby slayers was one possible. Ooh. You know, mm. just if you're thinking about it, you know, mm. maybe um, not. Uh, you've also referenced removing a lot, perhaps like right. the removers Remo- or the baby removers <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> whatever. Or you... we could name just the building. Hear me out. Put the first letters of all of our names together and be, get ready for it, the scaly twigs. What? You said the first letter of all our names. That's T. Oh, you meant to make words. I thought you were just going to make like a (laughs) grill. That makes much more sense. T. Waverly. Ah, That's a W. I figured that out later. Uh, Ingot. Mm. Crystal. Twig. That's a word. Not a very strong word. Hmm. But gwit doesn't mean anything, does it? Gwit. <laughs> this is why Thee uses a fake name. <laughs> oh, Just a thought. I put another hmm. post in the, uh, below. Maybe twig. Maybe twig. twig. <laughs> we just have several signs, huh? 
So, so you spend a couple of days, you know, cleaning out the many, many cobwebs, making this place your own. Um, I imagine that you, by the end of it, you've got one wall of the main area that's just covered in post-it notes with various <laughs> uh, name options and different job titles that you assign to one another, and it's just it's just a whole mess. Um, but as this place is actually starting to shape up and, and feel like a place that you could see yourself spending a lot of time in, it's starting to feel very comfortable by the end of all this. Um, Gristle, you are, are, I believe, pretty pretty good with tools, that craft skill. Uh, oh my God, you're right, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. You managed to, uh, to, to head up a lot of the repairs and make this place uh, you turn it from an old haunted spider infested fishing camp into a into a little home and oh. as you guys are, are finishing up we do this whole like you know montage of everybody uh cleaning and sweeping and then turning to the camera like uh, it's very uh, good 80s rock it's, only it's yeah. it's super good um and at the end of the <laughs> montage a woman in her late 30s in fine but very well-worn traveling clothes, approaches your house uh, on horseback, knocks on the front door. We, we have out. a customer! And get yells out <laughs> as the door gets knocked. Uh, yeah, you throw it open and you see she's standing there and she's sort of giving everything uh, an appraisal. And from the set of her face, it seems like she approves of what you've been doing. Oh, Is, are you um, the ones to... I don't know what to call you, mm. but are you the ones who slew the dragon? Yeah, you the, you took care of that. <clears throat> no, yes, we, we are. <clears throat> and these the, are talking really um, loud. <laughs> we are the, the pacifiers and uh, scales, dragon slayer, twig, and healers. Mm. We are heroes, and we are would love to assist you with whatever trouble may have uh, come upon uh, you. Okay. Uh, well, my name is Aloria Galantine of Galantine Deliveries. I do find that it's best when you're choosing a name, something very simple, just just the one businesswoman to another. Um, but anyway, speaking of business, I do have a little bit of it, if you're currently available for commission. Mm. Very much so. Okay. I'm happy to hear that, because one of my couriers is actually missing. It's a woman by the name of Nerala. She's actually a centaur, very experienced, very familiar with her route. No chance she's gotten lost. So her missing a, missing her schedule is quite a concern to me. She was expected to make her usual run from Absalom down the Granary Road with several parcels that have also not shown up uh, since she never made it. She's not usually late, so I'm concerned. I actually would like to hire your services to make sure she's okay. Help her if she's not. Mm. For this, I can offer you 20 gold pieces. Just locate Nerala. But if you find that she's in danger and there is a, a hazard of some sort and you can help her overcome that, I am willing to throw in an additional 10 gold each hazard pay if you can return her safely. And these last locations where she went from and is headed to, would you well, be able to was, mark them? Yes, she was coming from Absalom, uh, and she always takes the Granary Road. I would say that you should really just be able to backtrack that that trade route. She doesn't deviate from that. I mean, it's a route that she's run hundreds of times. Jim Jam. As yes. an ex as with a skill feat of experienced smuggler, can I uh, make a check to see if like there are certain parts of that road that mm -hmm. are easier to hide or like raid someone on than others? Sure, absolutely. I love it. What would you like me to roll for that? Uh, if you do have a lore underworld or lore smuggler or something like that. Uh, well, actually, could I could I do thievery since it's re related to my smuggling? I don't mind that. I don't mind thievery. That's a 26. 26, yeah. Uh, you know that Granary Road is, uh, so so the, the area out here, the closer you get to, especially like a place like Absalom, mm -hmm. the more well-maintained, well-guarded, and uh, safer the roads are. Mm -hmm. When you get out into 
streets, areas around Otari. Things around town are relatively safe, but you guys are a much, much smaller settlement than Absalom. And uh, you would guess that if there were any trouble to have befallen a courier, it most likely, unless, unless we're talking about bandits or smugglers who are just absolutely wildly overconfident, it would have happened closer to Otari than Absalom. Um, but you also know that a lot of the space in between is just not maintained. It's not patrolled regularly. Not only you don't know of any um, uh, notorious bandit gangs operating in the area, but you do know that occasionally there are there are individuals who feel like they, they can make a name for themselves. And you also know that there are still a fair number of natural hazards that that are active in the wilds. Travel is just there's a natural danger to traveling, yeah. even in a place like this. Cool. I'm going to pass all that on. Mm. Sure. The parcels that she was carrying, do you happen to know the contents or if they were particularly valuable? I don't. I know the clients uh, are all locals. Uh, they had made special orders from Absalom. I'm hoping that once we recover Narala, hopefully, safely, and the parcels that she was carrying, we can simply finish the deliveries. And I don't think there was anything particularly valuable in there. I don't know why somebody would specifically target her um, if, if that's a concern, because, you know, it, it was just normal stuff. I believe there was a order for, a, uh, there was a local druid looking for some dried herbs. There was a special order for, you know, some, some alchemical reagents, but I don't even know specifically what. Do you know Nothing if any of, valuable. Do you know if any of these people were first time clients of Norara? Nope. Uh nothing out of hand, nothing out of the ordinary about the deliveries themselves. Uh mm. the route is very normal for Norala. Um, and our customers are all people that I've worked with many times in the past, ordering things from the cities. And besides being a centaur, would you be able to give us any sort of physical description of Nerala? Uh, yes. She's, um, you know, she's got long uh, black hair that she wears in a braid, goes down to, uh, uh, down her back. Um, she, uh, she's got a, a, a black and white dappled flank. Um, she's, She's really the only centaur I've ever even seen on the island. So, I mean, she'd stand out, you know, you're, you're not, uh, there are no centaur communities around here. So um, I know she's originally, not originally, but, but you know, she'd lived in Absalom for a long while. Um, I, I don't even know if she had any centaur friends in Absalom. Thank okay. You, Gloria. Yes, we shall set out on this mission. Uh, unless there's any more questions, I feel like she might be in danger. We should go. Mm. I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what you'll find. Hopefully she just got held up some for some reason, and then that'll be the end of it. Well, have no fear. The four of us piece... Oh, gosh. You know what? I don't know what her name is anymore. We, mm. I, I gristle guarantee that we will bring your friend home safe, no matter what the obstacles. And my team will assist me. Oh, yes. Hmm. Excellent. Happy to hear it. I will wait in Otari uh, again, look for Galantine deliveries. I have an office there uh, when you find any news of Nerala. And I do want to make it clear that while the deliveries, that's my business, but her safety is my primary concern. If if you recover the, the, the parcels, excellent, but do whatever you can to help her. We promise if she's we in will trouble. find her, and if any harm is done to her, and Waverly will kind of try to jump, but she's a little too short to reach the post-it note that says, and healers. Um, we we will heal, heal her, I promise. Excellent. Before she leaves, or on her way out, um, before she leaves, I will give her um, one of those like PR gift boxes of the Vander Rip uh, pickle <laughs> ah. <laughs> thing with like the T-shirt and like the little, uh, you know, post-it notes and stuff. This is a nice touch. You know, I think once you get the naming thing all figured out, you guys really have something on your hands here. 
And she I leaves, uh, okay. confident that you can find the courier. Hmm. Waverly rushes to her room, uh, grabs literally everything she owns and puts it in her bag because she doesn't own much, and uh, is like at the door, okay, um, shall we go? I feel like there's a getting ready montage of everybody like getting into their rooms. <laughs> One more gonna montage. On the shelf and like <laughs> run the crystals into a bag and then throw them on. <laughs> I make a new page for my scrapbook and like get it ready. Like a new adventure begins on this day, December. <laughs> <laughs> I go into one of the walls and pull out my bag of stuff that I don't keep in my own room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I yell down to feet. Hey, don't forget the uh, the sword. We got to promise to fill oh. to the, the floaty. Finley, yes. Finley the floaty. Hey, yeah, that's easy to remember. Mm. Finley the floaty. Mm. Yeah, and then we can head out to the edge of town. Sure. Or, yeah. And um, I bring my horse and put all our stuff on it. Oh. Ah, uh, yes, you bring the horse. Um, I. <laughs> oh, curious. Uh, so the the onyx dog we had we had talked before. Salmon can be activated once a week uh, for six hours at a time. So basically, you only get a little bit of time with salmon. Um, do you want to bring salmon out now, or are you letting him charge up? Uh, I'll bring the onyx statue, but I will not activate him just yet. Okay, cool. Has it been, how long, how many days has it been since, like... I mean, I would say, you. Brought, I mean, a- after you last, uh, uh, unless you would have brought him out during the time when you guys were just rebuilding stuff, just because you Good like dog. him. Good um, <laughs> uh, I would say at this point, he would be ready to be used once again. Okay. Let's put in my back pocket. All right. In the back pocket. Travel along Granary Road is relatively easy. Um, this is a pretty major tradeway between Absalom and Otari. Uh, there, you pass by clusters of farmsteads that work to feed Otari and distant Absalom. You spot lots of farmhands and occasional, and occasionally you'll see a traveler as you're moving along. Um, this close to Otari, things are pretty busy. So it, it's like you're still sort of, you're basically like out in the suburbs and then the further you go, um, the less and less you see, the more wild the terrain gets, the more overgrown the areas around the road get. Um, as you're moving, uh, I am curious to know if anybody is doing any exploration activities. Uh, recall those are some things you can do to give yourselves a little boosts or notice things or, or what have you. One that you may find useful uh, in this particular instance uh, is the track activity, which is something that you can do if you're good at survival, basically specifically using that to try to find tracks if you're trying to, you know, find, say, a centaur. <laughs> but you don't have to do those things. I mean, if if uh, Aloria is right and she was just moving on the Granary Road, there's not a whole lot of, uh, like, it's just there's the one road that goes to Absalom, so. I'd like to be reading to a book about centaurs. <laughs> you're reading a book about centaurs. I like it. Um, uh, Ingit is going to keep a lookout um, at the a, anybody that we're passing by, uh, just to sure. see, you know, intentions. You're keeping a lookout, uh, Fee and Gristle. Anything from you? Uh, I guess I would uh, be scouting since I am also still sure. on the horse. Uh, so I don't yeah. know if I still move at half speed if I'm also on a horse. Yeah. So speed. so basically, if you guys if you guys are doing any activity uh, activities, you, the party would have to move at half speed, mm-hmm. um, unless you guys want to do a weird stagger. But then things get real real messy real fast. Um, no. Yeah. I'll I'll, I'll just keep uh, scouting then. Okay. Sure. That's cool. So don't forget that plus one bonus to initiative if it gets rolled. And then Thee, anything? Uh, as we pass people, um, mm-hmm. Thee is going to intentionally speak to any other traders and try to make himself appear as a trader with the people that he's talking to as he passes. Uh, sure. Like, a, like he's a trader being escorted with his companions. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, just for funsies, you want to roll a deception check for me? I would <laughs> love that. <laughs> That's a 19. 19. Um, you, you actually have a couple of conversations with some passing travelers, um, merchants. You, you spot a couple. It, it goes so well that maybe some of your old old habits start to kick in, and, and you realize that you could set up some 
pretty successful scams with if if you could convince everybody else to go along with it you could probably make a little bit of money you might have to flee otari not too long after that but these people like you get them like your patter just comes so naturally and you can feel them starting to trust you in the way that you're like you could you could hook a couple of these people if you wanted to i'm gonna keep that in my pocket <laughs> <laughs> But soon, uh, you are sort of out in the wild. And at this point, it's been a couple of hours and you're, you're not seeing uh, any more farmhouses or any more people around. Um, but your, your scout, you do see something quite interesting up ahead of you. Uh, in the middle of the road, you see a statue. Um, it looks like the statue of a, maybe a woman on horseback. I go look at, well, actually, hold on. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, everyone, I, I scoot back to the team. All right, uh, team, uh, d what are we, whatever, team. Uh, we have a slight, a big clue uh, in the middle of the road here. Uh, should we all approach together? It appears to be a statue or a horse that's gray or a statue. I don't know. We should look together, though, I feel like. Thee, is there normally a statue on this road? Well... Anybody can roll a society check if you would like, or like a geography if you've got that, or... A lore Otari. I miss a great... Nope. I know bad people of Otari. I got a straight 17 on... Okay. Uh, um, society. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like it should, like... What does it look like? There shouldn't be one here. You don't recall hearing about any statues, especially not this far out in the middle of nothing and nowhere. What did um, you say it looks like, Jim Jam? <laughs> like a woman on horseback. Hmm. Does if we get closer, does it look like a centaur? Well, curiously enough, as you as you get a little bit closer, you see it is the statue of a rearing centaur. Uh -oh. um, not a woman on horseback at all. You do uh. note that it it seems, despite the fact that it looks incredibly detailed, and the the sort of woman human woman portion of it looks um, incredibly new and fresh. Uh, a lot of the rear quarters have like huge chunks of the horse part are missing and crumbled away, uh, as if like an old statue and a new statue had been mushed together. Oh, this is so strange. Ingot's going to pull out his uh, little crystal uh, that he can see through, and it's his detect magic. Uh, does sure. the statue give off any sort of magic? It doesn't give off any magic, but as you're sort of examining the statue and, and looking about the area, you hear something off the road that sounds like the cross between a bullfrog croak and a cat hissing. It's a very odd, disconcerting, and loud sound. However, it is also unmistakably feral and aggressive. And then the brambles to the west begin to shake and shudder oh, no. as a reptilian creature bursts from the brush, charging with open jaws toward the lot of you. <laughs> and it is time to roll initiative. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I yelled, did you make the statue? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you get a plus one, Crystal. Oh, we all get That's one, right. don't we? Oh, we yeah. all? Everybody gets yeah. a plus one. Uh, scouting helps everybody in the party. Nice. Uh, 11 for me. <laughs> 11. Where is my name? There it is. All right, so we got Gristle, 11. What about Waverly? 30-20. Fee? 19. And Ingot. Dead. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, <fine>. dear. <laughs> All right, Waverly, you are first to react. You see this strange, hideous creature come charging out of the underbrush, jaws open wide. It does not look good. This is not looking like a, uh, a potential friend at all. What do you do? I want to know more about this creature. So yep. I would like to reach into my knowledge. And, yeah, uh, uh, arcana or nature will suffice here. I'll go nature. All right. Oh, okay. Um, 
it's going to be 22. 22. When you look at this thing, you immediately wish you hadn't. Oh, no. Because you recognize it quite easily as a basilisk. <gasps> Basilisks are well known for being able to petrify their victims and then eat the stone that you become with their gaze. <laughs> uh, I quickly look down at the ground and okay. and uh, um, nobody, nobody, look at it. It's a basilisk, and we'll become exactly what it did to Narala if we look at it. Um, but I don't know how else we're supposed to fight it. Um, oh. And, and, uh, just kind of, uh, because it's charging us, right? Oh, yeah, it's, it's coming right at you. So, uh, Waverly will just kind of, like, scoot backward without trying to trip while she just looks at the ground and not at the thing. Okay, so uh, this brings up a a fun little mechanic. Uh, You guys can take an action every turn, if you want to, to avert your gaze. It costs Uh one action, um, and what it does, it will give you a plus two bonus against any save that you might have to make until the beginning of your next turn um, involving a gaze or visual effect. You just, it's averting your gaze. Um, I don't think of it so much as like taking an action to avert your gaze. It's more like doing what you would do on your turn, but it takes longer because you're yeah, not careful. looking where you're going. Um, or you could close your eyes, which would make you immune to the gaze effect, but it would make your enemy hidden from you, which means that to target them, you would require a DC 11 flat check to, to even have a chance to hit them. Um, but you would not be subject to a gaze attack because your eyes are closed. Uh, I'm not going to have making your closing your eyes be an action. I just don't, I I don't think it fits into the action economy. Maybe the book says differently. I'm not going to make it an action. However, to avoid abusing it, you have to decide whether you're going to close your eyes at the beginning of your turn. So you can't take all three of your actions and say, well, now I close my eyes. So I'm immune. You can decide at the beginning of your turn, whether you're closing your eyes or just, or, not doing anything. You don't have to do any of those actions, but those are options for you against a gaze effect. Um, Armed with that knowledge, uh, I know that you did a recall knowledge. You back up a little bit, so that gives you another action worth of movement. Um, Averting it, do you actually want to take the avert gaze action, or is there a third action you would like to take? I would like to raise my shield instead. Shield is up. All right. After Waverly, we move to Thee. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to quick draw and use my short bow and take okay. a shot. Yep, go for it. So first strike, that's a nat 20. Ooh. Oh, hey, there we go. This is when the crits need to come. <laughs> and the short bow is deadly, so that's an extra yeah. d10. On top. Nice. Indeed. Let's start off well. All right. Not bad, not bad. That's 12 points of piercing damage. Okay. Uh, Gonna take another shot, why not? Sure, yeah. Bow comes out, arrow flies, strikes this creature almost dead between its eyes, and then a second arrow comes out. That's a 21 total. 21 is a miss. That second arrow clings off of its tough, scaly hide. You know that you were close, but couldn't quite make the connection on that second strike. Did one speak? more action. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to move back 30 feet. Getting away from that creature. Yeah. Leaving Gristle still on horseback and Ingot standing in the road. Waverly and, and Fee have both like backed away, <laughs> forming a front of these two uh, allies. And, and it is now the Basilisk's turn. The first thing it is going to do is charge forward to get almost right up in in uh, Ingot's face. Oh. And you see its jaws are open wide. Like, it's just going to come down on you. But it doesn't come down on you. With the, it just focuses these glowing oh, green no. orbs right on you, matching your gaze. And I need you to make... A fortitude saving. Oh, okay. Oh, here we go. Nine. 
Oh no. <laughs> That's not quite gonna do it. Oh no. You feel your whole body begin to slow. All of your movements become so much more effort. And there is like this cracking as like this layer of gray, uh, like dusty stone starts to form over your skin. You are currently slowed one. Oh no. Which means that you will only be able to take two actions each turn. Okay. Whether that's all that currently happens. Uh-huh. Uh, you're slowed one, and it was two actions for me to use that gaze attack. So oh. it is now the end of my turn, and we move on. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, what would Gristle do is the, the, mm. the scariest <laughs> question I have to ask myself, because Gristle's kind of an idiot. Um, all right. I shall not avert my gaze. I'll just close my eyes. I feel like that's a whole different thing. So whatever, I'm going to attack this thing. I, clo- okay. I decided to close my eyes. You to close your eyes. It's a terrible okay. idea. I'm also on a horse, so I don't know if it adds anything to it. Uh, I, to be honest, I didn't look up all the horseback combat uh, rules. Doesn't I didn't matter. know we were doing that, but Here I should are. have figured it out because I knew about pork chop. Uh, so I'm just going to say for now, why don't we worry about the DC 11 flat check? To see right. as as cord comes down, do you even have a chance to connect with this thing? Because you can't see. That's a nine. So a nine. <laughs> oh. Gonna do it. So what? your sword like whips down as you close your eyes. You almost cut into Ingot, who's standing there, has to oh. duck through your blade, uh, and you just like whiff right through the air. Though it does still use up your action to do that attack. You have two actions left. <laughs> oh, I guess I'll do so. Um, would I if I decide to attack again? I would have to re-roll the the vision thing. Yes, every time you target oh, the I creature, see. Every time. you have to you have to <clears throat> roll that flat check. Never give up, never give in. I do it again. <laughs> okay, roll your flat check first. Ooh, 16. 16, pass the flat check. Now you need to hit the creature. So and you I, need to roll an attack. This is a high, attack. high thing. Okay, please. Okay, oh, well, before I roll, um, I uh, I want to just hit with my great sword. Oh, I got to take it out. God damn it. <laughs> There's so much. Do I have to do a sight check to draw my sword? Uh, no, drawing your sword would not be um, would not be a check. You can just grab that. Okay, I, I would action. say that Should I re-roll the sight check then. That fighting with your great sword on horseback is probably exceptionally difficult. Is a one-handed it? weapon would probably be way easier. I don't know. I have better field of view. Cause I'm higher. <laughs> you can't fight me. I'm talking about like wielding a two-handed sword <laughs> on your horse and not decapitating your horse in the process. Fine. <laughs> Fine. I would never hurt pork chop. Uh, so what am I doing again? What's what's happening? <laughs> There's, now you need to roll. So, so we we retconned. This is actually your right. last action of the round, mm-hmm. but it's your second attack. So we, we retconned that you had to draw your sword, mm-hmm. and because uh, I had forgot about that too. Um, now just uh, you you passed your flat check, so now you're making an attack. This is your second attack for the round, so it has that minus five penalty, but otherwise Ooh. good to go. Uh, that is a seventeen plus nine, so that's twenty uh, eight or uh, you know yeah. Mm-hmm. So twenty eight. It, yeah. It's a hit. It's a oh, hit. finally. Uh, 26, okay, 28. 26. Oh, 26. 26. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it is a hit, and you feel your blade like cut through flesh. You hear this monstrous cry coming from below. You know that you've done it, as you always knew you could. I, Go ahead and roll I believed in myself, everyone, and so should you. I rolled a, uh, yikes, a six plus three is the nine. Nine points of damage. Pretty good. A solid hit, especially for having your eyes closed. <laughs> I yell, might, is, right, might makes right, and just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is still kicking big time, though, and it is now Ingot's turn. Remember, you can only take two actions this round because you are slowed one. Uh, Ingot slowly reaches down to his belt, not looking up at the creature, and takes out the crystal to shave for a bit, and then slowly <sighs> blows the dust for a two action spell of sleep in the basilisk's Sleep face. <laughs> so it has to make a will save. All right. Uh, oh, buddy, that's an 18 on the die, 29. Oh, oh no. That's that's higher than my spell DC, yeah. surprisingly yeah. enough. Yeah, I was going to go. I was going to that when I did a success. <laughs> that's all I do. <laughs> OK. Uh, all right. So. We move on to the top of the next round. 
Uh, Waverly, you can see something happening to Ingot. It looks like his flesh is slowly becoming stone. That's a big problem. Mm. What can you do to help? Uh, actually, uh, what would... Um, am I able to heal that, or no? Uh, not like with a... Uh, no, so, so you do know. You do know that there is hope. You did pass your your arcana check earlier, or your nature check earlier. You do know that there's a little bit of hope because if somebody is petrified by a basilisk gaze, if they are then coated in the blood of a freshly slain basilisk, they can that that process can be reverted. Got it. Um, oh, that's so helpful. Okay. Yes. Uh, Waverly is going to, uh, when I moved back, am I further than 15 feet back? Hey, yeah, I mean, you, you could, you, you can be as far away back as up to your speed. So you tell me how, how far away cool. you want to be I back. definitely am only within 15 feet of the creature. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, That's cool. fine. That's... <laughs> so I'll, I'll use one action and avert my eyes. Okay. And you avert then... your gaze my gaze and then i will um cast burning hands okay uh i would say that without moving you would uh the, the end of that cone is probably gonna hit your good buddy and and uh, actually gristle you, gristle and ingot are both in front of no. you between the creatures so you would have to take another action to move into a better angle which i know would mess up you or you could just catch him in the blast i mean just heal him afterwards you know nah. they'll be fine no, that's okay. Um, I will, instead of uh, averting my gaze, I will move up closer and out of reach of them. I don't want to hit them. Um, sure, yeah. You, you basically could, like, uh, circle around clockwise uh, so that you don't actually have to get closer to the creature. You just make it so that your friends are no longer between you and it. Um, and then huge fan of flames comes blasting forth from your fingers. The creature rolls a save probably taking half damage on that one. Yeah, that one's it's gonna be a 22 total on the yeah. reflex save. You but still have... half damage. That is true. All right, here it comes. Oh, only six points of damage. Six points of damage. Did you, uh, so then half is three points of damage. But still, you catch, you singe some of this creature's flesh. It's, uh, it sees that it's, it's, it's having some issues here. You're wearing it down, but it is still, it's a tough cookie. It's still going strong. After Waverly, it is Thee's turn. So will I have to move to get a clear shot on this creature with my computer? Yeah, I would say that uh, they currently would get the soft cover, increasing its armor class, but you could move then to. Okay, yeah, so I'm, I'm just gonna move like more toward, probably like the opposite side that Waverly went to sure, try yeah. to get a so soft shot. Really, yeah. You guys are now on opposite sides of it, uh, and now you have a clear shot. All right, so first shot with my short bow. Uh, it's a 23. 23 is a hit. All right. Better be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that is for four piercing damage. Four um, points of damage. Arrow now sticking out of this creature's flank. I'm going to take a second shot. Yeah. All righty. I'd say 22, one less. 22 is a hit. For those of you uh, using deductive reasoning, you've found the magic number. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, for another three piercing. Another three points of piercing. So two arrows th 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 right into this creature's side. Cool. And that's, yep, that that's ends, all three. Move. Uh, yep, that's all three actions for Thee. Yeah. We move on to this creature's turn. It feels these two uh, arrows pierce into its side and immediately whips its eyes around, gazing deep into yours, the And I need you to make a fortitude save. Let's do it. Am I good at that? <laughs> I'm not good at that, am I? Uh-oh. Nope. None of us are good at fortitude saves. That's step for me. Oh, good. That's a 19 total. A 19 is also a failure. Oh, I didn't even have a chance. Start to calcify. <laughs> You are now slowed one as well. Uh, that was two actions with my third action. I'm going to whip around, and this creature is going to, like, rear up and try to bite Gristle on that horse. Don't like it. Jaws coming in. 
Unfunny. using hitting an armor <laughs> class 19. To oh, it meets. Does that mean it still goes or no? That still goes to me. So that is going to, the teeth just sink in, crushing into your armor. You can wow. hear the metal screaming <laughs> under its jaws. The pressure so immense. And you take 18 points of piercing. Oh my God. Excuse you? <laughs> this thing and... has powerful jaws. Oh, that's that was its turn. Cool, it is cool. now Gristle's turn. You get to respond in kind. Um, uh, that's so bad. <laughs> uh, do, do I know? Do I know what Waverly knows about the? Um, did you yell anything when you did? Did your turn and got did that check about how to cure? Oh yes, I said yeah. don't look at it. What? Or, or how to cure it with the blood? Or do um, I not know that yet? Uh, probably, probably would have said something. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say that's all we have to do. Beverly, how do I, how do you, you cure the stone thing? <laughs> There's a way to cure it, right? Yes, you have to slay it first. Are you sure you can't just, I'm like, right, I'm like on my horse running around. <laughs> Are you sure you can't just make it bleed a little bit and then use that blood? No, it has to be completely dead. Not sure, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, Wait, uh, really, what you know is that it's, you can't just splash some blood on somebody. You have to like paint be. them red with its blood, like oh. this thing. Like, you need a lot of blood. Um, you have to slay it. <laughs> all right, all right. I mean, fine. <sighs> um, I uh, I close my eyes again. <laughs> Just doing it. And I'm okay. going to... Uh, my sword's already out. Mm. Yeah, I'm just going to uh, try and... Can I do with my, uh, my uh, power attack on a horse? Yeah, you can still power attack. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I will try it. So I'm gonna call it and do my. Does that mean I have to do the the eye eyeball the uh, the vision check once then or twice? Uh, so so a power attack is it, even though it costs two actions, it's only one, one attack. So you're okay. just passing one check. Great. To do it. Let's hope I get it. Okay. Uh, here's the vision check. It is a sixteen. Yes. Sixteen does it. So you 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 manage to connect. Let's see if you can actually hit and pierce through its hide. Uh, that is. It's a 19 to hit, which I know doesn't hit, 19, does it? 19, not quite. Even God though you it. find it as you're stabbing, it dodges out of the way just in time. Fortunately, you do have one action left. You could make a regular attack or do something else. This is probably pretty nuts, but I'd like to try it. Um, can I jump off the horse and try to grapple it? You could jump off the horse. A flying tackle, I mean, I would say that that would typically two. cost two actions. So no, okay. not with one action left. Uh, I, uh, I I, would like to try to take the, the horse, just try to like get, disengage and like get away. Make the horse move. Okay. Yeah. So you would basically, you're, what you're trying to do at this point is command your animal to move mm -hmm. uh, because there's a potential that it could like panic in this circumstance. You oh, do need great. to pass a nature check. Oh, well, I got no proficiency. <laughs> um, that's a 10. What, 10. Happens? what happens to me? Uh, possibly nothing. Uh, let me look up one thing because you're only uh, this nature check is against the will DC of the creature. So a 10 could theoretically, like, horses aren't especially willful creatures. They're, so. ob they're obedient, right? Um, yeah, generally obedient. The horse, uh, it sort of like starts dancing to the side, but it doesn't respond to your commands. You feel it like spin around, is not responding to your commands, um, doesn't want to move. Uh, poor so chop! Poor <laughs> chop, poor chop, geez, he's not a war horse, he's failing you. Oof. Um, but that will take us out of Gristle's turn and into Ingot's turn. Yeah. So, uh, because it's on my turn, do I become slow two or not yet uh no you you don't get progressively worse like you oh, okay. still feel exactly the same you don't get any better uh cool. but you feel exactly the same as you did last time you are still slowed one got it yeah um so he's going to uh take out a little um sort of pack that he had used before uh in the caves and he's going to slowly but still fling it uh to around to like the other side of this where this basilisk is sure. uh and he's gonna cast ghost sound and okay. the goal here is to surprise it from behind sure. to make it sure, either sure, turn sure. around or shock i like it but there is one thing that happens oh 
Before, as you start your turn, as you get this plan going, this creature uses a reaction. No! To turn its gaze, its eyes on you. As it sees you moving out of the corner of its eye, it whips its gaze around, like sort of reared back, and you need to make a fortitude save. Oh no, okay. Uh, a 12 plus my 42, 17? 17. And as you like pull these reagents out of your pouch and you're about to like gather the magic into your hands, everybody watches as his body freezes in place. <laughs> no! And Ingot becomes stone <laughs> permanently. No! And with that, we will take a short break and be back in just a few minutes. <laughs> We'll see y'all, and we'll see what happens after a short break. We will be back. Don't worry. It's all good. Hopefully they can get some Basilisk blood before this just goes super south. I don't know, though. <laughs> I don't know. This is tough. I was worried about this one. Oh, well, <laughs> a few guys. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Whew. Maybe. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Are we still on? Bring your game to life with officially licensed Pathfinder miniatures and Pathfinder paints from Reaper Miniatures. Pathfinder miniatures are available in both metal and bones plastic versions to suit your gaming style. Sculpted in heroic gaming scale, Reaper's officially licensed miniatures range features everything from iconic heroes to fan-favorite monsters. Don't forget to use officially licensed Pathfinder paints, Colors of Galerion, to paint your Pathfinder miniatures. Pathfinder paints are highly pigmented for fast coverage and feature excellent flow with a matte finish. All Reaper paints are water-based and easy to clean up. Please head over to ReaperMiniatures.com to see the entire range of Reaper's officially licensed Pathfinder RPG products. Gather your crew and prepare to embark on the journey of a lifetime as you explore the packed worlds of the Starfinder universe, taking on the role of a science fantasy hero customized to fit your playstyle. But danger lurks amongst the stars. Will you fight back with advanced weaponry and cunning tactics? Or will your hero wield the devastating forces that fuse magic and technology together to alter reality? Your crew must come together if you have any hope of victory. In Starfinder, every decision drives the adventure as you build an epic saga with your friends. Bring your story to life in a game where the fate of the worlds rests on the answer to the most important question of all. What do you do? Begin your journey into the Starfinder universe today with the Starfinder Beginner Box, now available at Paizo.com, your local gaming store, and anywhere else adventure can be found. The games we play are the stories we create. The fortress doors swing open. Every story is unique. And the sound of war drums rises. Sometimes our stories come to us when we least expect them. We need to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Sirenscape can help make yours epic. Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has never been easier. Up your game with a Pathfinder character folio from Ultra Pro. Each character folio features a full art cover, 12 single pocket pages for character sheets and maps with dry erase capability. Also, internal front and back pockets for excess notes. Find 
character folios at your local game store or shop.ultrapro.com. Roll20 lets you build maps, drag and drop tokens, and other features that your kitchen table just can't do. My table can't do any of those things. No. Also, Roll20's video and voice feature let you connect with more people. So if you wanted to invite Lucas and Ariel... Hey guys. Hello. What's going on? That's no problem at all. Ready to play? Your friends, your games, your table, Roll20. fighting basilisks some of us are some of us have become statues but well what can you do what can you do fight <laughs> fight indeed and fight you must because this is why i tell you what troubles in otari is the follow-up to the pathfinder beginner box you're thinking okay low level adventure it's going to be a nice stroll through the granary road we're going to find this courier surely the adventure will be, you know, fight some goblins maybe or something. No, they throw a basilisk out there and say, deal with it. Mm. Uh, and deal with it, we must. Let's dive back into this incredibly harrowing combat because I want to know, I want to know if Ingot's going to be okay. I don't know that he is. <laughs> this could go either way. It's bad news. Uh, you guys have all just watched Ingot be completely petrified, literally turned to stone before your eyes. You know there's a chance to save him. Waverly's lore has revealed that there, there's a way back, but you've still got to kill this angry, incredibly dangerous basilisk without being turned to stone yourselves. Waverly, it is your turn. Top of the next round. What are you going to do? I close my eyes. Okay. And I'm going to heal Gristle. I have to get in turn and do it. I'm gonna try to. Okay. Um, uh, using my two action heal. Two action heal, all right. In order to target her, you do also need to pass that DC 11 flat check um, because yep. you're targeting a creature. Eyes are closed. 
Ah, oh, Eureka, it's a 16. That does it. Uh, <laughs> and that is all you need to do. Now you just roll the healing. There's no addition, like you don't have to otherwise hit her. Uh, you just need to, to roll that healing, so. Great, here comes. Horrific jaw wound that you incurred begins to close up thanks to Waverly's soothing healing light. It's not much, eight. Eight, eight. points, eight hit points. Eight is more than zero. <laughs> it's true. And that is my turn. Okay. Uh, after that, we move to Thee. You saw what happened to Ingot. You can feel it already happening to you. Oh, that's scary. What do you do? None of this is good. <laughs> <laughs> um. some stupid stuff. All right, I'm yeah. going to uh, one, so I'm going to close my eyes. Okay. Uh, and then use one action to move towards it. Okay. And then the second action to attack with the short sword. Okay. Quick draw that short sword and stab at this creature, hoping you can connect with flesh. Go ahead and roll your flat check first. 17, flat. Needed above. 17? Oh. This, and this is just for the sight, right? Yeah, this is just yeah. to pass. And since you can't see it, it's just to pass. 17 the, the flat? Cons- yep, 17 flat does it. So you you know you've got it dead on. Now you have to hit it. I hate this thing so much. <laughs> <laughs> 23 to hit. That does it. You connect. You find flesh. Deal your short sword damage. Is a seven point seven points of damage. That's pretty good. Is this the lightning short sword or just a regular? The lightning short sword. All right, you guys are wearing this thing down. It's covered in arrows and bleeding wounds, but it is still thrashing around wildly. It does not seem to be uh, out of the fight by any means. However. That. that is the end of Thee's turn. His eyes are closed, so he doesn't have to worry at the gaze. I believe that Gristle's eyes are closed. Mm-hmm. She's not worried about the gaze. Waverly's still looking around. Nope, her oh, eyes are closed. closed. Yeah. She closed her she eyes. Closed her Everybody eyes. has closed their eyes. I can't do anything worse to Ingot. He's already <laughs> suffered the worst I can do. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to start biting people, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Chomp, chomp, you just stabbed this creature, so it's unhappy with you. The basilisk turns. You don't see anything, but you feel this rush of of energy coming towards you. you. You just know it's coming at you. So you duck instinctively when you have your eyes closed. Now, sorry, a second thing that we need to, uh, to, to deal with is that you are flat-footed to anybody who can see. So no, you are currently <laughs> flat headed. Sorry, yes, I know, right? I, I, I should have mentioned it before. I was so worried about the gaze, I forgot. Um, however, when I roll a one on the die, <gasps> it kind of doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, this thing in a rush just like spins around. Uh, you almost flatten yourself on the ground instinctively. This creature's jaws snap on empty air above and it misses horrifically and embarrassingly unable to connect with your flesh. Uh, thrashing about wildly, uh, it doesn't really seem to have the wherewithal to like focus fire. It's just it's just overcome with this rage and violence. So then it it, it goes to bite you, misses, but, but, but instead of trying again, it just whips around and tries to bite Gristle. Uh, Gristle against you, uh, that is going to be an 18. Does not hit misses so it just like clangs off the armor this time the teeth can't quite break through the metal uh it holds strong speaking um, of point of order um yes does a basculus have the same rules as a medusa with like a mirror if it sees a reflective surface and is looking at it it also turns to stone or is this not you, that kind of game <laughs> you don't know you could okay. attempt a a check on your turn arcana or nature okay. to see if there's more information about a basilisk that well you i can, was just saying even if i didn't armor. know my armor is very, very shiny, shiny and reflective as ah, established in the story okay. so maybe something that i'm just this way sorry out there with your shiny armor I don't need to worry about that in this circumstance. Okay. So it has, so I was it's, wondering it's gaze is wondering. not being reflected back at it through your armor. 
Um, <laughs> just trying. Uh, yeah. It tries to bite the. It tries to bite Gristle, and then it just rushes over to Waverly, who's standing oh. there. Now, normally, this would trigger an attack of opportunity, but unfortunately, your eyes are closed, oh. so you can't make an attack of opportunity against the creature because you don't really see it. You can't see it. It's hidden to you. Um, but uh, Waverly, you can't see it, but you just like you feel this looming presence and you can like it's it's fetid breath like hits you in the face you know it's right in front of you now and it is your turn or no it's not your turn it is sorry it is uh uh why did my thing go away where'd my thing go who hasn't gone yet whoever hasn't gone it's crystal's turn yeah I think whoever hasn't gone it's your turn there's only one option crystal um so it's closer to Wait, yeah, it's really moved now? away now. Um, mm. You you didn't really see it, but I mean, you can hear it thrumping around. You know it moved. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, okay, I'm gonna uh, open my eyes, I guess. I don't know. Um, and sure. I would like to, because I want to move towards it. And I, and I don't know okay. if it's going to turn around or whatever. Whatever. I whatever. You. I'm very angry at this thing. It's attacking my intern. I want to jump off my horse and try to grapple sure. it so I can keep it still. Uh, to jump off your horse, uh, go ahead and roll me an acrobatics check. Okay, acrobatics. That would be, uh, 15 plus 1, 16? Oh, no, that's uh, a plus like 5. It. That's the wrong number. Okay. That's always a, that's 20. <laughs> I like it. Even in the heavy armor, uh, you're pretty graceful. You've learned how to move in it. You just, uh, swing one leg over pork chop, uh, and then drop down nimbly and go rushing in and you want to grab this thing? Uh, yeah, I so want to grapple gonna... it basically so it can't move around anymore and people know where it is because they can see me doing this. Well, the, so you, you you basically, the you got to grab it. So in order yeah. to grab it, grapple it, uh, you didn't make an athletics check. And I would like to preface that with from behind so I don't <laughs> look at it. <laughs> Grabs its uh, face. I grab it in the face. Oh, it's a nat 20. Ooh. Nat 20. All right, uh, what is your total? Oh, the total is 25. 25? Okay. Oh, wait, athletics uh, or yeah. acrobatics? 27. Uh, athletics. Athletics. 27. <laughs> okay. So you have this creeper, cre- uh, this creeper. <laughs> you have this creature grabbed now. So you've, you've got it in your hands. Um, when it gets the grabbed condition, it can't move around anymore. So that's one thing good that happens. And it becomes flat footed. So it, 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 you're, you're basically just, you're, you're tying it up. Um, can, can I use my third action to like cover its eyes with my hand? Um, no, but it's fun for funsies. I mean, put it this way: mechanically, I don't specifically know how that would work, but I like it. So, if you want to make an additional athletics check, however, this one uh, will—it falls under all uh, grappling and all of that falls under attack actions. So, this would be at the minus five, like normal. So, athletics check. Fine, I got a plus seven athletics. Come at me. Great, I love it. (laughs) Go ahead and roll your, roll your die. Shoot. <laughs> Shoot, why was I so dumb? Uh, that's a four plus seven is like nothing. Seven, eight. No, eight, so you're trying five, to like scramble around to cover six. its eyes and this thing's bucking wildly and trying to thrash you off of it. You almost lose your grip on it. Uh, and you you are unsuccessful in attempting to, to get its it. eyes. You did? Come at me. I, I, I do want to yell, can we just kill this thing already? I've got it right here, but just aim, don't look at this part. Look at the, this this part of, you know, it's facing that way. Okay. I will say that famously in Pathfinder, facing isn't really a thing. Uh, <laughs> but I will respect that you are on how, its back. How do heads work then? <laughs> I, tell me. It's always a, it, well, here's the thing. It's, it's, a, it's always been a weird in the abstract, but mechanically they just don't deal with facing because it's very complex. Sure. So by the rules, there's no facing, but I will, as a nice, kind GM, respect the fact oh. that you are on its back so it would not easily be able to look at you. As someone who knows how animals move, the only complicated facing would be owls. <laughs> End of list. <laughs> all right, all right. That's going to get you for that. All right, good. <laughs> Uh, let's move on. That was good stuff. You're on its back. I like it. Uh, the image is very cool. Uh, Waverly, top of the next round. This thing is up in your business. What I'm going to keep my eyes closed. Sure. 
and Gristle wise. just spoke to me and said she jumped on this creature and to kill it. So I'm going to use my best judgment to realize that it's right in front of me, and I'm going to cast Burning Hands. Oh, Burning Hands. Uh, well, you know who else is right in front of you because Fine. they're grabbed onto it. Yeah. It is Gristle. Sorry, <laughs> so I'm going to need a reflex glory. save from Gristle. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll make a reflex save, and I need a reflex save from Gristle as well. Oh, might not have gotten it that time. That is a 14. Oh, you failed. Uh, Failure. Oh, no. That's Did a net I... one, but I have a plus. Oh, flex, Gristle, so that's still... a critical failure. Okay. <laughs> what happens on a critical failure with burning hands? Didn't Does it say, is there a critical yeah. failure effect? No. <laughs> and oh. it's just double damage. Oh. Wait, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can critically it's fail. It's a 14. It. I'm going to swoon. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Hoping for lower than seven. Here we go. Uh, six. Oh, oh, oh goodness. <laughs> <laughs> two, three. <laughs> Excellent. That means I have two hit points left. So you catch this thing like full in the flames with a blast of fire. <laughs> and then Gristle, you just feel this searing pain as you are engulfed in flames. And it's just like your skin is crackling. You are oh. like, your hair is on fire. Uh, you are having a bad time on this basilisk. Beverly! <laughs> Did I get it? Did I get it? I mean, I, close. I guess so, because you got me, but you know. Oh I, no, I'm so I'm, sorry. I'm not the one giving you a grade in this thesis, but if I was, that would oh. be some points oh. off. <laughs> <laughs> points off for blasting your friend. No, no. Oh, no. Um, those two actions, you technically do have an action left. Uh, oh, because you weren't counting closing my eyes. No, oh. I, we're, we're not putting that. You just have to decide whether you're doing it at the beginning of your turn, but we're not using it as an action. Only Great. averting your gaze is an action. Great. I am going to move away from this creature. Move away. <laughs> just back up. <laughs> hope it doesn't have a feat of attack of opportunity. Sure. Uh, as you move away from it, whether it's because it's it's so distracted by Gristle on its back, or perhaps the, it got caught off guard by the blast of flames, but it does not sink its piercing teeth into you as you book it away. Uh, Fee, it is your turn. So with with the basilisk being flat-footed, is would that only be against? Uh, melee attacks, or would that also still be against range? Attacks? No, the creature when it, when a creature is grabbed and grappled, like it is flat-footed, so it it against any target, anything that targets it, it's gonna have the flat-footed condition. So, um, am I able to shoot it from where I am? Like, just I don't have to move right. Well, you had moved right up to it, so yeah. you're kind of point blank. I. Oh, no, I didn't move up because I've been. Oh, I did. Yeah, because you oh, moved up and stabbed four. it last round. Yeah. Okay. So if I'm if I'm still next to it, then yeah, I'm gonna. I'll yeah, I'll just I'll just swing at it with the short sword. Sure. Uh, are your eyes open or closed? I look at ingot. Uh, I keep my eyes open. Eyes open. All right. Yeah. This is well. This is your this is your shot. You know that this is a big opportunity for you with it being flat grappled. Uh, go ahead and roll your attack. So, one question. With this yeah. sword, that uh -huh. lightning strike, can I do it while I make an attack, or is that something separate? Uh, it, 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 For flavor, you could yes. certainly, like, stab it and then discharge, but it still costs an action to activate that ability, so you would yeah. still be using two actions. Cool. All right. Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attack, uh, and then I'll activate. Blast it with lightning. All right. Uh, so go ahead and roll your attack first. Poor Gristle. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 28. 28 is a hit. Blade sinks deep in. Go ahead and add that sneak attack damage. I did the heroic thing, not the smart thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ten uh, points of damage. Ten points Ten. of damage. And then, and then, yeah, if you want to just uh, activate the spark blade. 
So I'm gonna like stab it in and then discharge uh, just, the sparse blade. Yeah, I like it. I like it. So the blade sinks in, and then there's this, this like burst of electrical energy inside the creature. Max He's gonna make a reflex save. Uh, a reflex save. Just so, oh, I don't think I told you the DC. There's a DC 19 reflex save that oh. goes whenever you do this. Um, I failed, and you deal. Uh, I believe it was a 2d4 plus four points yep. of electricity damage. That's max. Um, now, 12. while it can arc. You yeah. can choose a second target. It doesn't have to. Oh, okay. So cool. you don't, I mean, but you do have the option. Gristle's <laughs> right there if you want to choose a second target. Jim Jam. I'm, smile at are you on fire still? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's still smoking. <laughs> and and Thee just says, I just want you to know that I could do it. In that voice. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> but he doesn't, and then it basically just arcs upwards. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come here. I'll give you a hug too. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, okay. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. How much electricity damage was it? Uh, twelve max. Twelve. That was pretty good. Kill, pretty good. Yeah. This thing is starting to like. You can feel it's still thrashing beneath you, Gristle, but it's starting to slow. Its its motions are becoming more sluggish. It's bleeding. Uh, part of its skin is now charred from blasts of fire and blasts of lightning. It's covered in a dozen different wounds. You know that this could be it, but that doesn't make this creature any less dangerous, unfortunately. And it is its turn. <laughs> so it is going to whip around and it's going to level its gaze. I would argue that for, that for it to whip around, it would have to go against a strength check against me or something. I'm <laughs> uh, I would say no, it's not moving from its spot. And again, Pathfinder really doesn't have facing. So while I'm not going to target you with a gaze, I am definitely going to target B with a gaze. Uh, Thanks, forced. Michelle, for that. That was a good try. That was a yeah, good it was try. a good try. If someone's grappling at me, I find it hard to turn all the way around like an owl 360. Come on. You're not a thing that turns people to stone with your eyes. I hope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> all right, so that's a fortitude? Yep, fortitude save. Mm. Nope, that's a 15. 15. You all watch in horror as the also becomes solid stone. Can narratively, I'd be looking at Ingot as this happens. <clears throat> Absolutely. Looks over to Ingot. Reaching the last out. thing you see before everything just goes oh. to gray is Ingot. <laughs> you just reach out for each other. <laughs> I was flinging my oh, packet. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's two stone statues. Technically three. Is there enough left? <laughs> Gristle? Oh, we're gonna find out. Uh, can't I tear its head off of its body with acrobatics? <laughs> or athletics? Use your weapons! Of course, we'll listen. <laughs> I mean, I am grappling it. What can I do, I guess? Like, can I use a weapon on it when I'm, like, you know, I'm holding it and can if I stab it? If you have a one-handed weapon, uh, particularly like a dagger or a short sword, for sure. I do. I'm looking up uh, fighting while grappled mm -hmm. in Pathfinder now. Let me see. Pathfinder? Because the only I option. Can, I know for a fact that you can release the creature as a free act. Like you could just release okay. it. Okay. Um, or, or if my only option to not let it go and attack it is to twist its head off, I will do that also. Uh, if you want to make an unarmed attack against it to try to like just deal unarmed damage to it, yes. Mm -hmm. Will you twist its head off and rip it apart? Look, if you kill it, I'll I'll give you the flavor, but but <laughs> will you will you automatically yeah. rip its head off if you succeed? No. Gosh. Well, what what is the what is the um, unarmed attacks look like? I don't have a I think a stat for that. Uh, it would just be like your, a strength. normal attack, but your unarmed damage would be one d four plus your strength bonus. That's a lot. Um, typically, it's non lethal, I think. Unless you're wearing like a steel gauntlet or something. Oh uh, well, that's no fun. Fine, I'll just uh, stab it. Okay, I let it go. Fine, I'll stab it with my magic sword. <laughs> like I'm not moon. using that magic sword because that magic sword sucks. <laughs> I still, I well, actually, how would we do this? Because if I grappled it, if I if I had my sword out before, and yeah. then I jumped and then grappled it, is my sword put away? Did I put it away? No, what you're you're the so, the long sword that you were using is a uh -huh. one-handed weapon, so you can grab onto something with a one-handed weapon with one hand free. If you want to switch oh, to your great sword, you, you have to get your great sword out. But you can okay. have you can grapple with one hand. Got it. So I will I will do do the one sword one handed sword. 
Okay. And the long sword is the fire one that it is, sure is annoying to me, but it's fine because I have two <laughs> actions. I light it on fire. All right. There and you go. I, and then I the blade. And then I strike. It bursts into flames. Great. Please hit. Yes. Okay. That is a twenty-five to hit. Twenty-five. The blade sinks into this creature's flesh. Remember, you get to deal now an additional 1d6 points of fire damage. On top of the, uh, what is it, d12 plus th- No, a d... It's d8 for d8. a long story. Okay. okay. Um, so the, well, that's a 7, plus my strength is a 10, plus the d6 is a 3, so that's 13 plus fire damage. d6 plus just d6. Okay, so that's 13. 13 points of damage. This thing looks at Thee. He freezes in place just after unleashing a devastating blow. Half the party now stone statues. Gristle, you let go of this creature knowing that this has to be it. You activate the sword that you hate so much with such spite (laughs) just because you used it wrong one time. So it's obviously (laughs) the blade's fault. How many rules? And then you drive it up into this thing's chin as it whips its gaze around trying to lock onto you to freeze you. You just jam this fiery blade right up through the bottom of its jaw. The blade spits up through its skull. Brain matter explodes at the top. And as you rip the blade free, the whole body slumps. It is dead. You have won. Um, I hurriedly, I wave, uh, I just yell at Waverly. Okay. It's done. It's dead. Uh, help me get blood on these these two stone idiots so we can save them. I quickly rush to kind of grab like a tree, like uh, some leaves, you know, like a piece of a tree that I can kind of dip in the blood and then no. eat them with. I grab one of the legs and I get my sword. I just cut off one of the legs and I give her a leg. I cut off another one. <laughs> and I use it like sort of like a paintbrush, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just start wringing blood out of its limbs. Yep. Now the fun thing is I'm looking at this entry and it says, a single basilisk contains enough blood to coat 1d3 medium creatures. Well, that's mean. So there's a 33% chance that there's only enough blood to save one of your friends. So I'm gonna roll this d3. Unless. <laughs> so mean. See what happens. Is there anything we could do to help? Like roll to, I don't know. No. Oh, look at his face. Oh, what is yeah. that? What do we do? There is enough blood to coat three medium creatures. Good. Oh, for good. Everybody. Jim, you I guys. swear to God, this game. <laughs> <laughs> you just start painting uh, Thee and Ingot, coating them red. I have two legs in my hands. I'm just like, pop, pop, pop. Yeah, just flinging blood everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, I would also like to get Nerala as well. Sure. Um, as you're doing so, you note that there are really large chunks of Nerala missing. Um, you don't have enough blood. Uh, centaurs are actually large creatures. So after coating your friends, there's not enough to coat her, but you get the feeling that even if you did turn her back to flesh, she'd be dead anyway. No. There's no saving her. However, over the course of the next 30 minutes or so, both Thee and Ingot open their eyes, their bodies begin to move, their limbs now under their control, back in the land of the living, no longer stone statues. Are they still covered in blood or was the blood absorbed? Oh yeah, definitely covered in basilisk blood. Uh, This was like my 18th birthday. Oh, that's a cool story that you should tell later. We were uh, victorious then. Uh, do you both feel okay? Uh, like normal or just like a little stiff? Ingot's mouth is dry, but Ingot's body is wet. Oh, that's uh, the blood from the basilisk. We uh, chopped off its legs and used it to paint you uh, with blood. Oh. To save you. Oh. Thank you. Think. Thank you. But I'm afraid we can't save the centaur, even though I explicitly promised that woman that we were going to bring her friend back. Maybe we could bring this version of Norala back. 
Mm-mm-mm. Well, well, listen. I, there are magics we do not know. Maybe there's a way to save the centaur with someone else's power, and it, maybe we could just, I don't know, put some stone in the missing parts and like redo. I don't, I don't really understand magic, but if we could find a cart, then my horse could pull us back into town. This is not a fairy entirely. You understand that, right? She was not saved, but someone else in the future was. It is better this way. We were not too late because we would not have made it here in time at all. I look on the ground for some rocks that might fit in the holes in the center. (laughs) Sure. I'm going to try to stop Gristle on that. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. I'd like to do a medicine check on Gristle. Oh, yeah, straight up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, my, uh, like, this, arms this, hanging uh, off the limb. A treat wounds? Treat yes. wounds situation? Yes. Cool. Uh, go ahead and make that roll for me. Uh, while that is happening, uh, Inga and Fee, go ahead and roll me perception checks. Okay. 22. Sure. Uh, that is a success. That's going to get 2d8 hit points back. Easy peasy. I have one. Oh. <laughs> All right. 13. 13. That should patch her up pretty good. Uh, the you notice, because it's it's kind of your job to notice these types of things, that the, the centaur isn't carrying anything. Like she's got clothes on her back, stone clothes, but she's not carrying anything. And she would have been returning from Absalom Mm-hmm. with packages, but there's nothing else here. And as you're looking around, you do note that there are some um, very familiar looking footprints in the, the muddy ground around you. Um, reptilian little clawed feet. <clears throat> You've seen these pretty recently. And there's, like, this little path through the underbrush leading deeper into the woods near the road. He will tell the rest of the group, but before that, he he has a moment of, like, honestly, you know, I think they've actually earned my respect at this point. (laughs) I think our little kobold friends have uh, borrowed indefinitely something else. Oh! The parcels. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, is there any check I could make, Jim Jam, to try and come to a safe assumption as to whether they were a part of this basilisk doing this thing or not? Uh, sure. I mean, um, make a society check. Okay. <laughs> kind of recalling your knowledge about kobolds at this point. 22. 22, yeah. Um, Kobolds love dragons. Mm -hmm. They consider themselves dragon kin. Basilisks don't really fit in that. And, like, this basilisk was, like, this was not, like, the dragons are, like, intelligent creatures that you can, you can reason with. This Mm -hmm. basilisk was, was a monster out in the wilds. Uh, There's almost no chance that they would have been able to tame and control such a creature. However, you know that they're very opportunistic types, and uh, if they saw something untended in the wilds, they would have no problems taking it for themselves. Cool. Cool. So if we go speak to these kobolds, I think we should very clearly take a stance that even if it's not something that technically belongs to them, they did find it, there was no known claim ownership to it. And they are creatures of basically scavenge. Would have what? to barter or lie or kill them. Oh, I see. Classify that. Thank you. I'm curious to see if these kobolds saw uh, our centaur friend in this state and did nothing but just take the packages or saw her being attacked and did nothing to help. Is that bad? That's bad. Let's go. I just can't imagine 
Grisel, do you expect kobolds to be heroes? I expect everyone to have a little bit of heroism in them. But what is a hero? Someone who helps others. They helped themselves. That does not count. In so Grisel's you... dictionary of being a hero. But Grisel, they don't know your dictionary. They're kobolds. And we're off. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, we'll start following the trail. Tracking yeah. roll? Let's track it. Sure, yeah. Uh, survival check would be great uh, as you try to, to wind your way through this. Uh, this is really not so much of a path. You're really following a path that was made by moving creatures, not one that was cut into the into the wilderness and and crystal like immediately gets lost you guys can all tell that like <laughs> just like takes like four steps off the road it's like i think they went this way no. <laughs> she's just like pointing in a random direction uh does anybody else have uh a, 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 18 18 all right uh Inga, as, basically as gristle's like pointing go this way you just like take her arm and it point it in the correct direction yeah. like this way <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you begin leading your way through the dense underbrush. You could see that for a creature the size of a kobold, this would be a, a, a neat little escape path, easily moving through. But for you guys, you're like basically hacking your way through overgrown forest at this point. Um, any exploration activities, first of all? I like to stealth. Stealthing, avoiding notice, okay. The plus 10. Or is all it? All right. Yes. Yeah, Cool. Fee goes goes quiet like he usually does. Anybody else? Maybe taking after Thee's example, Inget is also going to try to stealth. Okay. You can actually do an action called follow the expert, where oh, you yeah. actually get you get a bonus doing what Thee's doing. You get to add your level to your stealth check in addition to whatever you would normally add because uh, you're following Thee's footsteps and example. That's okay. Cool. So that was an 11, plus my one of stealth is 12, plus my level of two is 13. Okay. Not bad. All right. Sneaking along, uh, Weaverly and Gris. Mm, I think I'd be searching for uh, any bits of leftover parcels anywhere, um, sure. more signs of different yeah. things. Yeah. Sure. Keeping an eye out is good. That's going to uh, searching. Uh, what is your perception bonus? Um, it is plus six. Okay, excellent. Waverly, anything from you? Following Gristle. Just following Gristle. And she follow the expert? Am I the expert? Oh, yeah. <laughs> My perception's better. Well, listen. <laughs> Who is it... the expert now? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so you've been making your way through the woods. Um, Gristle, uh, you don't see any bits of package or like dropped, you know, parcels or anything like that, but you do start to hear some vaguely familiarish sounding speech from several different creatures ahead of you. You don't recognize the words, but you've heard like, this, this, like, these are kobolds. Like, you're definitely approaching, like, a group of arguing kobolds, for sure. You've had enough experience with them specifically to know that. Hey, hey. Oh, team, team. There. Wait, hold on. Was it, what was he trying to teach me? Uh, sorry, I make, I just basically try to make, like, very bad well, what, what? whatever Thee was teaching me was probably more like SWAT signal, hand signals. Sure. And what I'm doing is more like, I'm a mom and I'm in a box. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say? Oh, just the, the, the uh, kobolds are like right there. That's what I'm just, Oh, yeah. Well, aren't we going to talk to them? Yeah, I just, I don't know. I kind of thought we were like being secret. I, I don't really know why. I just sometimes um, Thee will go into uh, stealth mode and I just feel like um, I should be quiet because I got yelled about that. Yelled at about that uh, once or twice, so oh. I'm trying to uh, do better. <clears throat> I'm anyway. not sure where they went. Do you see them? What? Oh, are they not with us? Oh, because they're stealthy. <laughs> you see, yeah, Ingot and 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 Thea <laughs> are, have <laughs> sort of uh, they're, they're basically like paralleling your path, uh, keeping to the shadows. <laughs> you I do just see go, Ingot over there. <laughs> they are in front of us. 
which is fine. Um, and then I guess for me, I'd like to keep, I would start to stealth more okay. or actually stealth to see if we can yeah. listen to another conversation. I don't know cobalt language, but I don't know. Maybe I think I could figure it out. Sure. Uh, and if you want, you could also follow the expert and sort of follow Thee's example to get yourself a little bonus on this. Yeah. Style. Oh, that's a nat 20. But, but with a nat 20, uh, you all, you sort of uh, keep it quiet. Moving through the brush. Uh, Waverly, how are you doing things? Nah, nah, I'm just gonna nah, nah, be. Nah. I'm just gonna be. Just gonna be. Just yeah, vibing. Yeah. Just vibing out in the woods. It's what we're All counting right. on. And but I'm gonna turn around and see Gristle's just gone. And I'm gonna be like, <laughs> I, I think we should have discussed the plan before we did anything. <laughs> um <laughs> and she's just kind of standing there. Uh are you guys still moving forward? Yeah, I am. Uh, Waverly, are you going to stop where you are, or did you want to move forward? As no, well? I'll, I'll continue forward. She, okay. uh, the last plan she heard was we were going to go talk to them. So okay, hey, okay, go talk to them. <laughs> so Waverly, your friends have all disappeared, but you're confident that they're they're they know the plan. You you've you've seen them stealth before. Like it's not like you don't know what happened. They didn't just vanish. I imagine Waverly has object permanence. <laughs> um, <laughs> And pretty soon, uh, not too, maybe 60 feet ahead, you come to this sort of little clearing where these little creatures have made a camp. Creatures that you easily recognize, kobolds. They don't look exactly like the kobolds that you fought beneath Otari. These ones, uh, they look like they've been living out in the woods. Like some of them have, uh, you know, they've got like furs and and feathers woven into their clothing. Like they, they, they this is their home. This is where they live. Um, and they are all armed uh, and they're sort of squabbling uh, as they are picking through this big bag that they're all surrounding. Um, and you just step into the clearing and they all like turn towards you and stop what they're doing and grab spears. And they sort of like, all rush to interpose themselves between you and the bag, uh, taking up this sort of like defensive position. Go away, ours, back, oh. you house, Hello. leave. Oh, um, I was, um, well, um, my friends and I were just making our way to meet with you. I was hoping perhaps there might be an opportunity to discuss that bag you have over there. Perhaps you'd be interested in um, trading for it. Um, you, the, the one that spoke, starts speaking again, but to its companions in a language you don't recognize. Um, but you make a perception check for me. Uh, 24. 24. Ooh. You see them all sort of turn back to you with this like sly but wicked look on their face and they're looking around and you get this sudden like real, the, the realization suddenly hits you that you are apparently alone. And because they, and they like, they're looking around, they don't see any friends with you and they start stepping towards you. Um, um, um no, no, thank you. Um, and one uh, of them says, what? What you have for us, let oh. you go home. Hmm? Oh, well, I don't pretty, carry pretty any... shield. No, um, I have I don't... gold, maybe. I don't carry anything of um value on my person, but my friends, um, perhaps do have something more valuable to trade. Um, I just wanted to come in and ask if there was a possibility. I would what like a... to, at this point, roll out of a bush. Hello! <laughs> okay. You come bursting out. Armor shining. Uh, they all like look over all of a sudden. Like one of them was about to like poke uh, Waverly with a spear. Mm -hmm. And then you just burst into the clearing and like, da -da -da! they all look around and like, wait, what? It trick. Back, back. Oh, no, hello. It, it is I, Gristle. You may have heard of me and our company. Uh, uh, and no, you haven't. We have, don't have a name. Listen. <laughs> Listen well, little things. I am here to trade with you the most wondrous item of all. Something you have never experienced in all of your tiny little lives. And I reach into my pack and I get a jar of pickled fish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now you may have experienced regular fish, but when you pickle them, 
and add ingredients such as dill, salt, and cream. You get a delightful new version of these fish that can keep basically forever in this tiny jar and are delicious in a way you have never tasted in your whole life. Now tell me, friends, would you not like to try a little bit of this pickled fish? <laughs> uh, roll a diplomacy check. <laughs> It's got a roll of such a good speech. <laughs> also, while they're distracted, Ingot is going to try to make his way around the perimeter to the other side sure. of the bag. Okay. Roll another stealth check for okay. me. Okay. That's a 13, by the way. Okay. <laughs> for me. 15? 15. Okay. Um, one of the kobolds, like, sort of steps forward. And is looking up at the jar of fish, turns back to his companions, walks over to the bag, reaches in and like pulls out one thing, looks to his companions. They're like not like, ah, fish, this. It's just like a bundle. You don't even know what it is. It's just a bundle of something that he pulls out of this bag. It says, trade, okay. But then he looks over and out of the corner of his eye, he sees Ingot sneaking around the camp. He says, not trade trick trick kill kill oh no and it's time to roll initiative <laughs> yeah. we tried so hard we tried we tried our best to... oh no you did you tried I, you, you gave it a lot of effort and i applaud that <laughs> i really do you got an oh 11. goodness uh sorry was that who was that it's me i only got an 11. 11 for Waverly. Ingot got a three. Oh no. <laughs> oh, oh my. This is not Ingot's night. <laughs> I got a 12. Okay. B? That 20 for a 30. Oh. That's, that, there we go. We, there's a big gap between <laughs> and everybody else in this in this lineup. I have a plan. Um, all right. There are three kobolds. B? You see this just fall apart and you know before, before, as this, it's almost like time slows for you as the one cobalt looks at Inga and you're like, this is it. It's over. It's now or never. You're still hidden, but you are acting first. So there's one thing that I took a few episodes ago and I'm going to stand up and reach into my bag and pull out one of the scales from the baby dragon. Hmm? Oh, trade. Okay. And I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna try to see how they react. Crawl I really wish you would have gone first. <laughs> yep. <laughs> For me. You just jumped out. I know, I'm dumb. Sorry. <laughs> what would you like me to roll? Uh, diplomacy. Oh, no. uh, that's a 23. 23. Plus seven. The kobold, like, that spotted ingot hears you jump up, looks around, and is about to, like, shout something, but then sees this scale that you're holding up and says something in its language to its companions, and they don't back down, but now they're all focused on you, and, like, there is this, you, you know that you've caught their attention, and there is this moment of hesitation. You're not sure exactly how it's going to play out. I'll, we'll hold the initiative order as it is. So if anything goes wrong, we'll just pick it up like this. But for the moment, we're not in combat. Mm -hmm. They definitely have taken notice. And there is this like sort of wonder in, in their eyes now as they're looking at this, but also some suspicion. You can say they don't really know exactly how to feel about this. Can I try to lie to them to convince them that I you can serve a always dragon? try to lie. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to convince them that I serve a baby dragon and that okay. I need this loot for the baby dragon. Okay. Make a deception check. I'm good at that one too. So the math is hard. 16 plus 9, 24? 24. Uh, 25. Okay. 25, thank okay. you. Okay. You tell the kobolds about this. Like, the first, like, Two of them are like, you know, they they still seem ready to just charge you and, and stab you. But then the third one's, I, 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 I. we know, baby dragon, <laughs> you take trade.
treasure, baby dragon. We come with. I give we you scale. give gift, baby dragon. Mm. We powerful too now. Yes. Take us, baby dragon. Prove yourself first. Baby dragon does not trust just anyone. You haven't shown strength, just cunning. I give you scale, but you go find me something else to prove. I meet you back here tomorrow. Make one more deception check. Worth it. <laughs> 13 plus 9. I can't do that. 22. 22. Yes. Not enough treasure here to impress Baby Dragon. Mm -hmm. The more we get, more. Yes. 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 Here you go. I give, I give them two treasure. scales, actually. I'm proud of them. Huh? We will. Here, you stay, camp. We'll be back soon. More treasure. Then, Baby Dragon, love us too. Yes. <laughs> Kobolds start to, to gather up themselves and um, they sort of like motion for you to sit by this little campfire that they've made. Uh, one of them like reaches out for this jar of pickled fish that you still got in your hands. Okay, no, this is off the table now because you're getting scales <laughs> for the baby dragon. This is a whole separate deal that you, you know, poo pooed. So no, get out of here. Actually, before uh, you... at this point, like the, the two, uh, two of the, the collect, they, they hold out their hands insistently like that. Ah! Ah! I, I'm still I'll, pay, I'll, I'll pay for the fish. Just give them the fish. <laughs> Do you realize you're sending them on another quest? Crystal, to... we can talk about this later. <laughs> you're gonna hurt somebody. Crystal, we can talk about this later. But when's later? Are, are going really to hurt going someone to, now? Are you, Crystal, Crystal, we will have all the time in the world to talk about this since we're staying here, right? But in the meantime, they're gonna be going to go rob someone. I stop of talking their and just stare. <laughs> Gristle opens the jar. She st Gr Gristle still stares at, at the opens the jar, <laughs> takes out one fish, eats it, <laughs> closes the jar, and throws it at the kobold. <laughs> Kobolds grab the jar and they, they immediately like tear it open and start scooping pickled fish into their mouth and like ah, ah, ah. they grab their spears and like pound them on the dirt uh, and and rush off into the woods to find more treasure for the baby dragon leaving you alone in their camp with this bundle of parcels. Okay, Crystal, since you don't seem to trust me, if you would have just let them leave, I would tell you that my plan is to tell the gods or someone else that kobolds are coming back here to steal something. But if you're going to ruin a whole peaceful route of something, I'm going to kill them next time. <laughs> to be fair. No, no fairness, no fairness. Fairness is stupid. You it, have to tell the team. You can't do things and, and go cowboy all by yourself. You mean like jumping Waverly out of a bush by yourself? <laughs> Waverly you jumped out of a different bush later. <laughs> Sorry, Katie, what? No, nope, Waverly just opens up the book of the rules that they, we established <laughs> back um, and uh, points at uh, communication. In good notice, there has been poor communication in all parties. <laughs> Fine. I guess if we're going back to square one of communication, we didn't talk about that we were stealthing to surprise them for any greater purpose. And we are sorry, Waverly. That was not right. Oh, I didn't mind at all. Ingot knows it still is not right. So next time we approach an enemy, we should probably <clears throat> communicate. <coughs> oh, yes what the priority is. Also, on the list of rules, I wrote down, yell, heads up, if someone is um, going into something that you don't want them to do. Oh. Good note, don't remember that at all. <sighs> well, fine. Are we I leaving suppose, now? The, well, yeah, we, yes, we have to go do that, but. Uh, Gods! And I just go and I I, I want to grab all the parcels. Kind yeah, of and get stuff. Yeah. Helps yeah. packing up. 
guess. Yeah. I'm gonna pull Fee aside. Well, I don't condone the use of lying. I do think that was a clever plan, although I can't help but feel worried about the poor souls that they tried to rob or harm next. You did mention calling guards to come here for when they come back, but won't the deed have already been done? I'm going to ask you a question, Waverly. Was it better that we didn't kill them or not? Well, it depends, because if innocent lives are about to be at stake because we let them go, then the answer is no. But you can't determine that ahead of time. True. And we have done so many things, and you have spoken to me about peace and not having to kill. In the first circumstance that I actively made that choice, you lead with, well, I don't condone. Well, I don't condone the use of lying, and I don't want any other lives to be cut short because we sent them on some quest to get more treasure. I don't know how to make you happy. Well, I'm always happy. So you don't have to try. I'm going back to killing. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> I'm gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. If if the if every time from now on you just shot first, I wouldn't blame you at all. Right. I get it. Man. I get it. <laughs> just like just about kill dragon scales. Done with it. Four steps ahead. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, now they're going to steal somebody else. <laughs> they can arrest them. Uh, good stuff. Excellent, excellent role play all around, though. I really appreciate these these complex decisions you guys are making. It's all really great stuff. Um, you do have the parcels. You couldn't save Nerala, unfortunately. It was too late for her. But you do at least have news of what happened. You've got the parcels safely. Uh, what is your next step here? Were the parcels on a cart of any sort? No, it looks like they, they were basically just, uh, there's basically just a big bag that is full of other smaller bundles of things. So Nerala probably just like had it over her shoulder, like a it's basically just a big backpack. Easily transportable, no issues there. Hmm. I would like to take the statue of Nerala somehow but it's probably too heavy to pick up so yeah you would guess that your your best bet at that point would actually probably be to you know where it is and it's a stone statue in the wild which is probably relatively safe so you could probably maybe get some help back in otari to to actually transport the statue um, so leaving it was probably only a temporary thing I push it to the side and cover it in leaves so no one sees it. Unless the kobolds claim that as the treasure they're going to give the baby dragon, then you have <laughs> yeah. this whole layer on oh, top boy. of it. Oh, boy. It'll get real messy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Although we're going to have those kobolds coming back for us at some point. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we'll head back into town then, uh, just along the granary road. Sure. You make your way back down the granary road towards Otari, uh, perhaps a little frustrated, perhaps a little somber, knowing that there was nothing you could have done for Nerala, but at least knowing that you have a plan to make sure that she can be put to rest peacefully, um, and you've completed your job, which is ultimately sometimes all you can do. You get back into Otari and uh, it doesn't take too much uh, questioning of the locals to find the offices uh, of the name that I said earlier. Galantine, Galantine oh, Deliveries. Galantine Deliveries. There you go. Simple. Galantine Deliveries. Easily, easy to find. Um, still open for business for the day when you walk in. Uh, Oloria is like surprised to see you so quickly and you can see this like spark of hope in her eyes but when she sees you after a moment like it sort of realizes very quickly um, 
but it's a little bit of sad news that you're bringing. So your shoulders slump a little bit. You tell her. Very least, it was sort of a random happenstance, and I don't believe she suffered. A basilisk turned her into stone, and unfortunately, we were too late to save her. Well, she was very headstrong and stubborn, and I know that faced with a creature like that, she probably opted to fight rather than run, like I would have told her to do. But this, the form of her still stands in the forest. Perhaps with some care, it can become a monument or a warning to other travelers. Perhaps I'll have to contact. I don't know if she had family in the area, but either way, those are arrangements that I will see to. Those are, those are my issues to deal with. You definitely have earned your pay. Uh, as promised, 20 gold uh, for the lot of you, and then an additional 40 for the hazards, the g- apparently grave hazards you had to overcome to deliver this. Unfortunately, without a courier in the area, I, I could offer you a second commission. Would you be open to making the deliveries for me? Perhaps in between our very busy adventuring schedule, we may be able- Oh, but we don't have anyone lined up next. I'm, oh, really? I'm looking through the very... calendar and our schedule is- <laughs> I um, put my hands over open. Beverly's mouth. We would be delighted. Well, excellent. I think that would be Narala would have wanted to see the job done. So you're honoring her memory by continuing that work. And I thank you for it. Obviously there will be pay uh, and I don't, I didn't have an and, I don't know why I said and, that was a stupid (laughs) thing to say. Uh, But either way, um, you now have a new job, a new commission on top of your old one. You've completed your first efficient, really your first official commission as freelancers, as a group in Otari. What that group is called, we're not quite certain yet, but Actually, we're working out the kinks. Eventually we'll have a solid, incredibly epic name. I have no doubt. I have full confidence it's shaping up to be a good one. I was gonna say, that is- just as a button at the end, Ingot is working on a, like a stone statue that could go over the, the compound. And it says Nerala's heroes, but he sort of keeps it away for now, just as a project okay. that he's working on. Nice, I like it. I like before, it. Before we go, I want to ask Aloria. Um, um, excuse me. Um, would you happen to have a business card? Oh yeah, definitely. She hands you a card. It's a very simple, plain little card. Just says, uh, uh, "Aloria Galantine of Galantine Deliveries." Um, and it has like the, the the address in Otari, offices in Otari, making runs to Absalom weekly. Uh, and and Waverly's gonna kind of tuck it away and look over at Crystal. Well, we had to have something um, because this was our first adventure, officially. I mean, why why not? Maybe we could start a little collection on the wall back at the uh, headquarters. That's exactly what I was thinking. Oh, but I didn't think that you would like that idea. I don't mind saving keepsakes here and there. It's not bad to remember great deeds. Oh, marvelous. So shall we go to the local constable to tell them about the (laughs) the wolves? Yeah. You okay. want to do that? You want to make your, your report? Okay. Uh, there is a, a, a it, it's not like, like there's not like a super official police force notary, but there are, there's a group of people who basically a constabulary force and um, uh, you're able to, to find that office pretty easily being from Otari yourself, Crystal. Um, there's a young man sitting behind a desk 
in, uh, just in just outside this this jailhouse in Otari. Um, they don't even really have like a lobby where you can go in and talk to them. Uh, but he's sitting there and sees the four of you walking up. He says, "Oh man, are you guys looking to sign up to defend the town?" I heard that there was a dragon underneath the town recently. So, you know, lots of new recruits looking to get into that business. Uh, dangerous times that we're living in, you know. So, uh, you know, I can I can go in and get you the forms and we can have the, you get one of these neat little badges. He's got like this little tin badge on his Ooh. chest and uh, it looks like you already got uh, equipment, but we all get these little cudgels. Uh, that's kind of nice. Uh, well, you're looking at me like maybe I'm. Uh, are you not here? To um, sign we up? are already defending the town. Thank you very much. We are oh. the local heroes of Otari. And... Oh my gosh, you're the one that actually you did the dragon thing, didn't you? I can't believe I didn't recognize you. Everybody's been talking. Oh, I, gee, I'm sorry. Hey, hey, do you, could you could you sign? I, could you want to sign my cudgel? <laughs> of course we're going to all find the cudgel oh thanks so <laughs> much guy, guy. oh the guys are never gonna believe that you stopped by oh, oh we should man. hang it on the wall i think that'd be a great monument you guys to, should uh... come by i should gather up everybody you could like give a little we got a lot of people would love you could give like a, a little speech to everybody about oh yeah how, yeah absolutely we could do a multi-course platform oh, where gosh, i come in I every couple of to... weeks and do a Oh, uh, anyway, we were here for a reason. Uh, Fee, you had a report to make. <laughs> yes. But you know what, Grissel? You speak so well. You no, I'm pretty sure this is your thing, Fee. I, I mean, I, you, you spearheaded everything. You had the grand plan in your head. You didn't tell us till later. He walks out. Don't worry about him. He's a little shy sometimes. Um, Don't lie. Uh, and he can still he hear us as we can hear him. <laughs> um, uh, has Gristle passed Waverly the the thing to sign the the, the cudgel? cudgel yet? Sure, yeah. Okay. Um. So so Waverly's kind of holding this this um thing. Uh, um. Excuse me. Uh, what what was your name? Oh, uh, it's Dan. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, is, Stan. Is, Dan again is my full name, but people call me Dan. My friends call me Dan. I'm hoping that you. you oh, you, oh, Dan! It was Dan. Constable oh, Dan again. Dan again. Oh, could you yeah. spell that? For when me? I come back, sometimes I tell a little joke, and I go in and I say, "Hey, it's Dan again." When I go home, oh. and every, you know, Dan again. You know, that's just oh. a. Uh, sorry, I was kind that's of. That's so clever. Silly, but... Um, basically, Waverly was so distracted by his story that she wrote Stan and then crossed it out and wrote Dan and then crossed it out and wrote Dan again and then forgot to sign it. Um. Anyway, <laughs> um, we have to report that um, there's a, a small army of kobolds just outside the, of a Tory. Oh no, an army of kobolds! Yes, this seems like a lot of. Oh, jeez. Um, Oh uh, no, would... do they got a dragon with them? No, no, but they uh, they think that there's another baby dragon because um we Oh may have no, told there's them. another baby dragon. No, no, oh. no, no. There's not oh. another baby dragon, but they think there is because that's what we told them. Um well not we, because uh, not me, but that is what the rest of my uh, adventuring oh. friends have told them so that yeah. they wouldn't kill us. Um but we do need you to um, go apprehend them, please, before they hurt any innocent people. Yeah, yeah, that's like, uh, that's like, I'll, 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 yeah, so, uh, you know, maybe, uh, they, yeah, we, we can go out there and get the army of kobolds. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say army. There's maybe like six, a very small group. Oh, three, okay. three, three. Oh, oh, oh even better, stand. my memory. Um, okay. <laughs> just three of three simple kobolds. It should not be any trouble for you. Uh, make a diplomacy check for me, Wave, really. <laughs> <laughs> She's not lying. She just has a bad memory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was that? Uh, diplomacy? Diplomacy, uh, yeah. 21. It's like, oh, okay, what? Well, uh, sorry, I, I guess, uh, you know, you're right, you're right, you know, right? you're right, yeah, 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 we, we, we can handle it, we, we can handle that, that's right, yeah, you know, I'm sure you got much, much bigger things to be doing than going out and apprehending cobalts. Oh, well, actually, 
actually no, we, um, we're we got the yeah we we can't handle this you know what you're right i it's just good you're oh, coming to us because yeah, we're like partners it's like we're me, like partners uh, excuse me dan again i don't want yeah. to uh, this feels like quite a task for you to take on um and, and no, you no, mentioned no, no, no. You us being it. really busy, it. but I'm looking at our schedule, and the only thing that we have to do right now is deliver these packages. But perhaps Waverly. you would like to take on that job, and we can go every other Oh, I am sorry. We can't. We can't do that. Uh, that's uh, we. We are only. Our jurisdiction is only really in defense of <laughs> town. I don't think making deliveries. Oh. <laughs> not really like a parcel service. It's just not something we can oh, do. But you know I what? Understand. I, 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 you know, we're, uh, you get it. I mean, sure, we work in different sectors of the adventuring business, but, you know, we're kind of in the same field, you know, so it's just a little bit different for us because we're like officials in the town and we got these little badges oh, here. Absolutely. Yes. No, no, you're right. We we've got this. You you go worry about the the big monsters, and we'll keep oh. the town safe. We'll get those kobolds. They're not going to be they're not going to be causing any trouble around these parts. Wonderful. Thank you. I lean over to the group. Hey, uh, do you think we're sending these policemen to their death or what? I mean, geez, they, he does not seem very confident. Um, I I seem to get the same sort of um feeling. Ingot thinks they can handle it. Ingot believes in the town's courage. Oh yeah, we're real courageous. And I got this signed cudgel. I bet that's a good luck charm if I ever seen one. I crack a cobalt right on the head. He's not gonna stand a chance. We're gonna bring him in. We're gonna arrest him. I've never arrested a cobalt. I don't know if we've ever arrested a cobalt before. That's a first <laughs> for this town. That's gonna be real interesting. I can't wait. Yeah, I would tell all my friends about that. I'd be like, hey everybody, it's Dan again. Huh? Dan again with another Another adventure and being um, the constable. Then again, That's um, fine. It have is you fine. Ever fought, I know. Have you ever fought or arrested a anyone? Well, there's one time that the blacksmith got drunk and he uh he, we had to, we had to wrestle him down because he was he didn't want to come off the roof, so we had to get him down and and he you know wanted to fight. We didn't really want to fight. We didn't want to hurt him, so we had to. Uh, it took by us and we only got a couple of bruises okay you know what i'm pretty sure I'm gonna, no, it's fine. I'm gonna round up my friend we're gonna get right out there we're gonna get those kobolds he like smacks the cudgel down on the on the table like we're gonna oh. go again i've got to go right oh, now no. i'm gonna oh look there's aaron and george no. over there i'm no. gonna go get them we're gonna we're heading now right hey guys we're gonna go round no. up the kobolds and he starts wandering off he grabs his friends and they start walking down the road towards uh, uh, the the western exit from town, which would take them down the Granary Road. Uh, oh, where they then again, um, them you're them actually the going the wrong way. Um, it's it's that way. Oh, he's out of earshot. He doesn't hear you. It's gone. Oh, goodness, that was probably a to his life. death. Yeah, or maybe not. Maybe he's a competent constable. It's really difficult to tell. Mm. I think we just got those innocent people killed. <laughs> well, just another day of being an adventuring party, right? Everyone? Uh, <laughs> Thee out there somewhere? Should we? All right. We should well. find Thee. All right. We uh, go outside. Yeah. <laughs> Thee, did you not want to be part of that super fun conversation we just had with the unstable constable? He would have actually headed back to where the kobolds were seen. Aha! Uh -huh. And he would go there and wait for them to come back and try, if if the constables were walking around, try to stop the kobolds before they were seen. Uh, so you can you can play out the rest of whatever you had in mind. <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah, what are you guys? Uh, you guys head outside looking for three and he's just yeah. gone. You don't see him at all. I think Ingot would launch into doing a survival check, trying to find any tracks or things that Thea has taught him to, uh, to look for. Go ahead and, and roll one. You know, it'd be pretty difficult. Uh, I mean, there's so much traffic in the center of Otari that picking out a specific person's footprints would be, uh, you would need magical assistance probably for something mm, like that. Especially with an 11. Yeah, <laughs> and then it's just like, yeah, there's, we're in a town. Like, mm, mm. Mm. All right, well, whether the decided to go back to headquarters or go mess around in the tavern, I'm pretty sure 
these constables are heading to their doom. I don't know why we thought we should, well, let's leave the bad guys to another group. That's a super good plan because no one discussed it with me. I would like to go back and check on that, uh, where the kobolds thought we were waiting for them. Stop shaking your Gristle. head, Jim. <laughs> Gristle, uh, m- could you tell me where the where the post office is? I, I'm not uh, quite familiar. What, what is this? Is it the time for mail right now? I just well, said we're going to go um, save the constables. Well, yes, but but we could just drop the mail off quickly if it's on the way out of town. Is it on the way? The yeah. mail. Uh, there isn't oh, the- really like a post. The, the postal service was the parcel delivery business that oh, was operating oh. in Otari which they don't have a courier anymore. So oh, great. That's that was our have job. agreed. Dang it, I forgot. <laughs> we are the the mail. postman has been turned into oh, no. a, a chunky statue. Okay, I forgot. <laughs> you Crystal, are wait. the only hope for these parcels getting into the into the world. Oh god. Um, <laughs> Crystal, I look at her. Um, we are the post office now. Yes, that's right. I've forgotten. Um uh, might I remind you that the only thing on our schedule is to deliver the post. <laughs> Yes, the parcel. Why do we do that? Why we deliver the parcels before we go searching for thee? What? <laughs> the parcels have to go somewhere like really far. I, <laughs> or is it going they're, into town? They're scattered about. Like it, it's it's a it's definitely a day or two's work to get the parcels <laughs> to where you need to go. Um, you're sort of traveling around rural Otari. No, to we're get- not. We don't do this. We don't do this now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we do do. As we leave the parcel delivery job for an, uh, for our next episode, because <laughs> that's what I have planned. Fine. Yeah. At this point, our current episode of Troubles in Atari, there are so many troubles. <laughs> so in many Otari, troubles. Let me tell you, we didn't Otari make any is a of troubled them. place. We made zero of these. Um, <laughs> and we will we will end this episode here, uh, leaving those troubles to be solved another day. We will be back next week where we uh, we'll, we will definitely <laughs> tackle the many troubles. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away. This was, a, this was a lot of fun though. I'm yeah. having a good time, guys. Don't think at all that because I'm blown away, it's because I'm disappointed. This is all amazing. You guys have taken this journey into directions I didn't anticipate, which is exactly what a GM always hopes for in their players. Bring in some surprises to the table. Um, just because an adventure is pre-written does not mean that you know what's going to happen. Uh, if you would like to play Pathfinder yourself, please don't forget that you can get the Pathfinder Beginner Box right now on paizo.com. And you can purchase Troubles in Otari. Look how much fun we're having. You could be having this much fun too. Uh, it's all available right now on their website, paizo.com. Uh, I can't recommend this game enough. We're having a blast every single week. You could find me normally on the Dragons and Things Network, which is another Twitch channel, uh, twitch.tv slash the Dat Network. We run a lot of actual play content normally. However, right now, it is currently on a year-end hiatus. We are going to be coming back with more actual play content in 2021, and we're going to be making lots of announcements about what content we're bringing back and what new content we're introducing to the network. So make sure that you follow the DAT network on all the socials, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, We'll be making lots of announcements and you don't want to miss out as we bring our 2021 schedule to light. Of course, we'll be back here on Paizo's channel next Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific for more Troubles in Otari. Thank you all for joining us and we will see you next week. Bye, everybody. Goodbye.